estate. He will not use money, but he knows that enshrined in every man is the desire to receive the accolades of men and this is where the mighty fall. What a woman may not be able to do in the life of a man or, the, or a man as it is. What money may not be able to do. What persecution would not be able to do. You will stab yourself with pride. Fame glory. That affinity for the applause of men. And let me tell you something. God is speaking to us to warn us. I have seen people. I have watched people. I have watched them nurture the seed of pride. I have watched them nurture it carefully to grow. The first sign that pride, pride is at work in your life is that submission becomes an embarrassment. To anybody, to anything, submission becomes an embarrassment. It's a sign that you're already dying from pride. Not just submission to a man of God, Submission to principles. Oh, everyone, lift up your hands and you just stand and you're watching. Lift up your hands for what now? Eh? The seed of pride. Submission. Thank you. Very important. Galatians 5 26. We we'll just look at two scriptures. I really want to challenge us on this because I have seen this thing kill people. Men, women, I've seen. And you know, the, the, the interesting thing about God is He gives you a measure of what He really intends giving you and watches your reaction. And many of us shock God and shock ourselves with pride and arrogance. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Vain glory. Vain glory. And a sign that the desire of vain glory is at work in you is that you begin to provoke people. You begin to envy vain glory. You see, there are two dimensions to pride I want us to pray against today. The first dimension is, we were discussing, I think, with Echimi earlier on this morning, and he was just asking me a few questions, and we're really discussing, very interesting discussion. There are two dimensions to pride. The first is the one you organize for yourself. So, I can sit down right now, Apostle Joshua Selman, the great man of God, and I find some of the leaders and some of the people, Pastor Alpha, Pastor Femi, all the people, and I say, look, create a scenario that drums my impact before everybody. So, it's arranged on purpose. Are we together now? That's the first dimension of pride. So, whether it is by creating certain names or creating certain things, you, you create a system. And that's not honor. Because I seek to use people to establish my relevance as against their own relevance. Now, the second dimension of pride is where many of us are victims of what we don't know. You may not create the seed but it is a desire you lost in your heart. And the day someone else creates it, you will jump at it. Hallelujah. You will jump at it. You may never ask anybody to open it. Look, listen to me. And learn and grow and walk in power. Someone may look at you and say, "Ah, um, You may never tell anybody to call you great man of God. But it's a desire in your heart. And the day somebody says, do you know you are such an awesome man? He said, what did he say? Can you repeat it again? He only stimulated something that has been there, waiting for occasion to find expression. Many of us think because we are not the ones arranging the scenario, it means we are free from pride. Sometimes humility, is it takes effort. You must reject certain, you must peg honor and say, no, this has come too far. It must remain here by yourself. I watch men of God on TV. Sadly, I don't criticize men of God. But I have watched people and I see like you pour cold water on a thirsty soul. That's how they drink pride. They drink it as members. It, you see, honor has a boundary. Once you cross that boundary, it no longer becomes honor. 
the character of pride is that you find fault in the glory of others so the character of pride is everybody must be down for you to be satisfied if we are all lifted you are not satisfied because the goal of pride is to attempt to show the excellency of your stature as against somebody so pride does not um is not satisfied when you are lifted it checks if others are down when they are down then you are satisfied are you getting that now so if we say oh thank you pastor alpha thank you ebenezer thank you ejimi ebenezer gets angry and say no 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 if you had said thank you pastor alpha um but i'm disappointed in you Ejimi, you didn't do well, but you are exceptional. He says, now you have honored me. Because you have honored me by contrasting others. That's the spirit of pride. So it wants to stand alone. There are men of God who have created all kinds of theologies in their ministry to downplay any once they see an offshoot of true grace they strangle it with teachings they threaten people with causes because there is insecurity locked up in them hallelujah are we together now vain glory a lost for the praise of men it's amazing how we look for it we beg for it we organize programs for it. We organize sons and daughters for it. You see men of God running around. Can you make my birthday? I mean, make noise with it. So t-shirt, so ankara, and put everything. Just make sure everybody around knows. And we laugh. It's a dangerous thing. I always say this. Bless people and give them the option of appreciating you by themselves. They will surprise you. They will surprise you. I run away from pride. Ego. Like a cancer. There are men of God who do not see eyeball to eyeball. Because somebody was called Mister By mistake. I remember, I think my people will bear me witness. We were, we were in, um, I think it was Enugu. Towards the end of last year. And... I went to minister in a crusade there and it was a great meeting people came around and there was a gentleman i think he's a pastor pastor's son so they introduced him mistakenly they said brother so 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 and so i saw the way the guy moved you know with anger and insults to my grace you don't know who i am and he climbed up the stage and the first thing he said was, look my name is pastor so 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 not brother so 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 and he challenged them to correct it and then the next thing he raised one song and said i hope there are ushers here because the power of god will start moving i just said ah yeah my brother you have done two mistakes one you have refused to recognize grace let me tell you when you enter a place where there is a higher grace if you don't if you don't honor it even your angelic activity will be seized there is ranking in the spirit that's why jesus looked for john the baptist who is the man with the mantle in the city and when he submitted and acknowledged him, his own ministry opened up. I said, this boy is a very foolish boy. You came and you saw pastors all over. Pastors you would not see. You don't even know who they came to honor. You don't know why they are there. You see, some of us are cheated because we don't know how to take advantage of opportunities. God gives you a privilege to stand in the midst of people that you never would have had access to. And you blew it because of pride. God wants to announce your ministry and he gives you an opportunity to take offering in a church that on a good day you should not even be found in front. And you come up and say, I just want to let you know that my email address is uh, so, 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 and so, and so. And I don't attend to calls anyhow. In fact, the way the ministry is growing now, how many members? 20, 30, 45. There's a young man, I will not mention his name, in the body of Christ. He had contact to Benny him very small boy when him prophesied his birth many of you may know him this little boy had unusual access i saw the way benihim was lifting him because benihim took him like a son within weeks his ministry exploded and this guy will be arrogant on stage imagine sharing the stage with an authority like benihim and one time i watched the guy he was talking and he looked at mike mudok he said get a pen get a pen quickly get a pen and a book and I was watching him and he said write this it was an accurate prophecy but when he wrote everything I said this guy's grace has died he didn't reach one year 
Have you not seen people rise up in the church? I'm not going to mention names, but you know. People rise up and it's like God just withdraws the grace. Pride. Pride is dangerous. Dangerous. And so that gentleman, he said, I hope they are ushers. Please, I want you to station yourself, move around because the spirit of prophecy is upon me. I, I sang one song, sang another. The people were angry. They were tired. They came with hunger. You know, imagine that kind of thing. They gave him time. He obviously overshot the time. And then he started prophesying. Now everybody lift up your hands. Right now the power of God will move. People waited five minutes. It's always pride leads to destruction, embarrassment, and so on and so forth. That guy did his best. He may have seen grace walk in his church. And he did not know the protocol of maintaining it. God would have honored that guy in no small way. If he allowed God to lift him. And the guy got up and made noise and was challenging the people because they always would look for an excuse. Moved around one lady, two ladies, and he left with all kinds of disappointment back to his seat. Brothers and sisters, at the end of that meeting, this guy was shocked and he stood. Do you know it's painful when you make noise over something and it doesn't happen and somebody else comes and is so effortless. The more it happens, the more people say, can you see? This is what you would have been. Pride is dangerous. Is God speaking to us? The Bible says when you enter a place, sit at the back. It's a principle. When you enter a place, let your work speak for you. Don't speak for it. Proverbs 31, it says, let her work speak for her at the gate. You come around with one album and say, I'm, I'm, I'm an anointed, I'm a psalmist. I have my psalmist, if you just give me five minutes, I will, I will surprise you in this church. It's a sign that nobody is a testament of the transformation that has come from your grace but when you allow god lift you listen koinonia i'm teaching you something run away from the quest for vain glory sometimes men will try to do it stop it i was rebuking some of these my young people that i help at, at times i saw some of them and when i see them among their contemporaries i see them standing i say you are already learning this nonsense I remember someone here, he used to be here. I looked at him one day and I said, come and stand here. He came and I said, you are soon going to fall. I see pride eating you up like a cancer. And he looked at me, he said, me? I told him, I said, there are many things I don't claim to know, but there are certain things I know. I know when a man is about to fall. You see, There are some of you who will honor anybody above you. But when you are among your contemporaries, that's when the pride comes. You are forced to honor someone above you because of solidarity. But when you are among your contemporaries, let the power of God begin to move in a meeting. And you see the way men of God, their body is itching for mic. Everybody wants to hold the mic. When the service is over, somebody comes to pick a mic and say, hold on, give me E. We are, we are not done. The, what God is doing here. All those things, we think there are signs of spiritual maturity. There are signs of childishness. Childishness. We went for a meeting in Yola. We are going to pray. It was a crusade in Yola. And I was ministering alongside God's servant, Dr. Paul and Enchen. I know that that's a great man. I've seen God honor me. But that's a father in the faith. God has lifted him. I will not sit down and begin to compare my ministry and it will be stupidity of the highest order. He's older than me. God has honored him. God has lifted him. He has become a model to the body of Christ. I know what many of us will do. You will try to make sure you snap with him and say, I've shared the stage with men like uh, so on and so forth and so forth. And you, you just sink yourself. Down. You can ask the protocol. I remember his, his head of protocol was communicating with Victor and he was excited about being, my being around. He, he heard about me and he wanted, he wanted me to be there at the venue. Right? He was actually coming for his own crusade, Dr. Paul. And then he, he was also to minister where I was ministering. It was a campus crusade. And this is what the protocol said. The night I went for the meeting there, the power of God was awesome. I mean mighty things, miracles upon miracles. And I knew that the people respect me. They respect me so much. And if I came there together with Dr. Paul and Enche, they will want to honor Dr. Paul and Enche, but they will not want to dishonor me. So they may try to create the same platform. And I rejected. I said, I'm not going. 
I said, I'm not going for the meeting. You can ask the head of protocol. They said, no, no, no. I should come around. You'll be wonderful. I said, I am not going. I told them we're not going anywhere. Let the servant of God receive the honor due his sacrifice. We will come in the evening and finish the meeting. Many of you will not do that because you are looking for platform. One day I went somewhere and one guy just came and stood near me like a thief that we should snap. He's a pastor. I was just looking at him. Because he will use my picture and take it to his ministry and say we ministered with men like uh, this person, apostle was there and, and think that snapping the picture is an endorsement of his ignorance and carelessness. Humility entails that you consciously reject certain things. Not every open door was opened by God. You need to know if the timing is right to enter it. Hallelujah. Don't think because a door is open and you want to enter. No. Sometimes God can say no. Your level has not gotten to this. Although the door is open, stay quiet. Is God speaking to us? This happens in every area of life. That's why many of us will never rise. There are ladies here who love God. But the day God gives you an opportunity, you'll be amazed at the pride and arrogance. And God is watching. How you are disqualifying yourself and allowing this ancient stumbling block of pride to stop you from stepping into the next level. I fear pride. I run from it. Hallelujah. I, I can't remember where I was sharing this testimony about a woman who um, carried something, you know, load. And I saw her and I was in a hurry to help her carry the load. No matter how I'm lifted, I know that I'm not stupid. Not at all. Humility. Humility. There are many of you, if, if you were the ones who were privileged to stand where I'm standing, you see crowds of people inside and outside. There will be one PA to clean your left shoe. There will be another PA to clean your right shoe. Are we together? There is the one who, he will not just give you handkerchief, you will put your face like this and you will clean it. That's what kills men. Years ago, in your campus, years ago, Many people who have been there long ago will tell you there were many pastors on campus. Ministry. I mean, somebody will have five members, three PAs, two ladies, one guy. I want to go on TV ministry. You see people holding books as if they are bankers. What are they doing? I am prophet this. I am apostle this. I am. I remember one pastor came and met me and said, Man of God, it is your grace. You need to. Go on air, go on radio. Many of those people, some are not even in ministry till now. Some are still roaming around, wondering what to do. God himself opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I was counseling a gentleman, maybe he's here with his mother. And the mother said something and the boy just shouted at her. Ah, my name is Joshua Selman. I turned to that boy and I landed it on him. I said, apologize to mama immediately. Otherwise, you have subtracted your years in life. The Bible says, He that dishonored his father, he said his candles will be his candle will be taken and will be left in obscurity. Honor, humility. Hallelujah. It's, God is my witness. It's just that the protocol and all these people will never allow me. I don't mind coming in the afternoon to clean the benches and do all the things I need to do. It doesn't change me. It doesn't change me. True confidence is not in things around. It's in who you are. If I clean a chair today, it does not make me less anointed. Listen, God is speaking to us. This is why some of us cannot be workers in the house of God. Because we think God has lifted me. And people are aware that the devil destroying you. There are ladies today who cannot quietly sweep the house of God. Because they feel kind. There is a man of God I met somewhere. He's a pastor and he said he likes me. And I'm already imagining myself as a mama. Let me tell you, I know the end of that relationship. Nonsense. Let me just tell you in advance. 
because God is not a fool. He will not carry his servant that he has been laboring on and then attach you to change his life. I hate pride. Our daddy is here almost every time. Prof, do you know that I'm even afraid? I always tell him that when I grow up, I want to be like him. A man that is so fulfilled and yet very humble. There are all kinds of distinguished people here. Day before yesterday, or was it I, I introduced them, um, Madam Ladi, and she was even quarreling me. She was saying, why did I expose her? There are lots of other people, distinguished people scattered. But there are people who will come and stand outside and say, tell the protocol I'm around. Who are you? My name is Pastor, Pastor, um, Goodwill, something. And so what? I mean, you can imagine. I came all the way from Kaduna. Let them know that I'm around. And give me six. The Lord told me, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. You know why some pastors will never have crowd? They can preach everything and criticize people who have pride. God knows. The moment they see crowd, the first thing in their mind is, how do I get lifted? If everybody gives me 10,000, 10, it's a lucrative business. If everybody does this and that, humility. By the grace of God Almighty, I never treat people and say, do you know I'm a man of God? No, it is, it is, this ministry is a call to serve. It's a privilege. I'm not embarrassed about it. I will say it all the time. It's a privilege to serve God. I was crying before the Lord today and I said, Lord, it's a privilege to serve. Never replace me with this stone. Never replace me. God has power to replace any man. I teach the leaders all the time. When we go for leaders meeting, the first thing I tell them is, guys, thank you so much. People look at Koinonia and they are looking at me. But you are the brains behind some of these things. I'm doing. Do you have the humility to acknowledge the impute of others to your success? Or do you make it look like they played a little role, but after I fasted and prayed? No. I learned from everyone. Everyone. And I treat people with dignity and humility. Ask the protocol how many times I've rebuked them just for telling people at the back, shift, 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 apostle is coming. And I tell them, never do that. Never do that. I know you need organization. You don't come and push people and say, apostle is coming. So what? This is all of me. How, how big am I that you're asking everybody to shift? Can't I pass? Some of us are already enjoying it. In our little fellowship you say when i'm coming you are the one who announced my coming you you escort me and i don't know where you are getting that mentorship from it's most certainly not from me i fear god and i've lived as transparent for you to see and learn many of us are learning nonsense we just go to any meeting and we are watching out of all that god is doing we are watching how ah, they gave the woman somebody came and just said oh man of god and you admire it and in your mind you are hoping in your own small fellowship too. People now come and say you are standing. Kneel down. We are going to pray. Pride is a killer. I've seen people who, do you know there are people seated here. I know them. They are millionaires. But you see them keep quiet. You can match them and they won't say anything. But they are wealthy people. But there are others with nothing but noise. Yet they will make all kinds of noise. Let me tell you, great people have a track record of humility. That's why they became great. You may see certain people. There are great men and women of God. There are people, when I was coming in, I saw people, I was going to say, ah, this person is here. Great people just scattered inside and outside. But there are others. I am Pastor this. I am Mrs. this. Please, we are going to pray. Brothers and sisters, I know this. In my little life, pride is a killer. Some of us cannot greet elderly people again. 
you see some of these are mothers and you just push them around and bring a curse upon yourself and your ministry. Never listen to learn from anything. Oh, I think you should. I know. I know. I know. We are fumbling. I know. When learning becomes an embarrassment to you, pride is eating you up. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne. Listen, the antidote to pride is a public acknowledgement of the value and the impute of others. You don't tear down the achievement of others to prove you are great. That's why you will never hear me open my mouth and mention the name of a man of God or a church or a ministry and castigate them. God is not just a God of koinonia. There are many other men of God doing great things. And when people start saying, Apostle, you are the only one, I say, be silent. I know that's the voice of pride. That's the voice of a killer on his way to destroy me. I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Lord, let it die. Let it die. That affinity for the praise of men. Pray, pray. That affinity for the praise of men on the strength of my accomplishment on the strength of my accomplishment oh god i lay it down i lay it down i lay it down i lay it down pray pray that spirit of pride that affinity for the praise of men the praise of men the praise of men the praise of men Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of, one of the indices that to measure true humility is how much you acknowledge the impute of God in your success. Are we together? Because chances are that the truth is you, have, you, you kept certain principles to get that result. So that people can look at you and say, Kai, no, 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 no. Pastor Alpha, at this level, you are already almost becoming a doctor and then a professor. Oh, you are doing this, I mean, you can imagine. And all of that is up to you to suddenly change to an usher and say, there is one. As you see me. That's why, you see, when I go for meetings and the power of God is blessing people, there are all kinds of reactions. There are those putting their hands on their head. What kind of man is this? And I'm quick to tell them, no. What you see, this is a puppet. There is one behind me. There is one who is responsible. I don't say it indirectly. I say it directly. Make no mistake. There is one who can give and take the grace upon my life. I am absolutely nothing. Koinonia is absolutely nothing. Thank God for the clap for Joshua Selman. But I am telling you now that this man you are seeing is nothing without the grace and the wisdom of God. I am not embarrassed. I remember where God took me from. From sitting in a gutter to study my Bible and see what God has done. After many years, I still refuse to be a fool. I know that when you acknowledge God, He will lift you. I like you to say, Lord, in all my ways, I will acknowledge you. Lift your voice and pray. In all my ways, in all my accomplishments, in all my achievements, pray. In all my ways, I acknowledge you. In all my ways, I acknowledge you. When 
my men try to blow the trumpet of me, I direct it to you. In all my ways, I acknowledge you. I will let men see how helpless I am outside of you. Those outside, are you praying? Lekoto kotobes ebra katanaba manta parokotos rekete tete le ba 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 ba. Hallelujah. You get to a point in your life. Two more prayer points and we're done. This prayer point is strategic. Because in the next two minutes, I want you to list everything in your life that looks like a trophy and say, Lord, it's because of you. If I've never said it, I'm saying it now. Lift your voice. If I have a degree, it's because of you. If I have a PhD, it's because of you. If I'm married, it's because of you. If I'm alive, it's because of you. If I am wealthy, it's because of you. Lift your voice, Koinonia. Acknowledge him. Because of you, you are my wisdom. You are my wisdom. You are my wisdom. You are my wisdom. The force behind this ministry. Lord, we acknowledge you. Lord, I acknowledge you. Pointing men to you. 
I become an usher. When they say, what's the secret of your wealth? I point them to you. What's the secret of your beauty? I point them to you. What's the secret of your exploit? Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I will let them know unashamedly, unashamedly, I will let them know. Pray when I'm tempted to receive your glory, when I'm tempted to share your glory. Oh, convict me, convict me. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it in the name of Jesus. I declare that I will let the world know. I will announce to creation that Jesus Christ is the reason for my greatness, for my anointing, for my exploit. And whenever I am tempted to take his glory, to be deceived by the accolades of men, I receive grace to reject the praises of men, to put a limit to the praises of men, that I may reveal Christ in my success, that I may reveal Christ in my lifting, that I may reveal Christ in my greatness. Listen, the purpose of your honor is to reveal Christ. The purpose of the miracles is to reveal Christ. If Christ is not revealed in your activities, you are arrogant. Never trivialize the impute of Jesus Christ and say, well, I thank God for the grace of God, but I labor. Stay there. And let men know is the reason. I made up my mind that every time people clap to me, I say you are clapping for the wrong person. I'm telling you this, and I say it with all my heart. That's why you don't see people say, "Oh God of Joshua, Selman, what, what do how, how many things can I do? Who can I help?" I'm, I'm not against people who there is a place for that, but I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we are too young to begin to allow this foolishness destroy us. I'm telling you this. I speak to us specifically, the young people. We are too young to allow the foolishness of the praises of men destroy us. We are too, I can clap for daddy. We can clap for our mothers. They have earned the right through time. But a small boy does moving and people begin to blow your head. It's a way of death. We are too young. We have read revivals. We have read history, Bible history. And seen how pride destroyed men. It was Alexander the way that got to a point where he claimed he was Elijah. That's what pride can do to men. Please, from tonight, hear me, pastors, business people, I'd like you to make up your mind. If there are a circle of singers and messengers that keep clapping and blowing your head, go back and tell them it's dissolved in Jesus' name. I love you. I thank you for honoring me. I receive the honor, but let's bring it down to the limit of my level. This honor is too much for the level. I've not yet gone far. You must have the grace to tell them. They'll say, no, 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 no. Daddy, you need more. Tell them, look, if you call me father, then honor me by doing what I'm telling you. Keep it that way. There was a time I stopped the protocol because there were two protocol people carrying, coming to take me. I said, this is nonsense. Please, I'm not ready. A particular PA of a notable man of God in this country one time, a military man, when he came for Koinonia, he was surprised. He saw what God was doing. And he said, man of God, you should not allow me to access you anyhow. I mean, this is terrible. The, the grace, they are abusing the grace. They don't sow into your life. They push you around. People come and I, I was hearing a sincere man, but I was hearing the counsel of Ajitofel sincere man the last time I heard about that man physically speaking he was doing well but spiritually he had died sleeping around doing
in all kinds of things. That was the person who was advising me. Be careful whose advice you take. As you sit down discussing ministry, young people, hear me. As you sit down discussing life, and God begins to bless you, one million, two million, five million, it blows up your head. No. You must maintain a life of modesty and be temperate in all things. There is honor and stability when a man is humble. It's difficult to accuse a humble man. Pride, pride sponsors accusation. When people say things against you, your humility can bail you out. Hallelujah. Please lift up your request and let's prophesy upon it. If you have it, if you don't have, that's all right. For those of you who are just coming, the Lord gave us an instruction. And the instruction is that throughout this fasting period, you write two sets of lists. You've been hearing the amazing testimonies. The first list is a list of your expectations. You are holding on to the horns of the altar and praying. And say, Lord, this is what I want to see happen on the positive. The second part of the list represents your challenges. The things that have mocked God in your life. You write it. And he said, these Egyptians that you see, you will see no more forever. And the Lord said, every day I should keep speaking. Speaking over it. And on Friday, prophetically, we are going to set the list of those challenges on fire. While he's burning, we are going to lift up high praise. The healer. That praise that brought Jericho down. Please don't miss Friday. Friday is like a miracle service plus. Invite everybody including your enemy. We are going to burn these things. While it is burning, not before. We are going to sing and jump before the God of heaven. It's called the healer. It's a mystery. And let's see the devil that will tie your destiny and keep you there. Please remember that every day we are breaking with communion. We are breaking with communion. If you do not take my blood and my, my flesh and my blood, you have no part in me. It's very important. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please lift it up to the God of heaven as we pray. Ezekiah lifted the threat the threat and said oh god bow down your ears bow down your eyes and see this threat father you have instructed us and we are obedient i'm praying in the name that is above all names once again every challenge every altar listen i was speaking to a lady this this afternoon and her, her issue challenged me Brothers and sisters, there are altars that sponsor some of these pains. We are going to judge it tonight. Lift, lift up your hand. In the name that is above all names, every altar sponsored by the gates of hell that keep these challenges to be repeated in our lives, it catches fire tonight in the name of Jesus. It catches fire tonight. Shekapakata. It catches fire tonight in the name of Jesus. Every spirit entity, every human entity responsible for your pain, responsible for your setback, responsible for your weakness, responsible for your delay, your joblessness, in the name that is above all names, we command the sword of judgment, the sword of judgment, the sword of judgment, the sword of judgment, the sword of judgment. Hallelujah. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused that Israel would not go. There was a time he said, You can go, but leave your wives and your children. I like you. There's no negotiation in this fasting time. I can't go. My health cannot go and leave my finances behind. My, my finances cannot go and leave my marriage behind. In the name that is above all names, every power. I say it again, holding your marriage, your destiny, your business, in the name of Jesus. I set it on fire now. 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 
Hallelujah. Every spirit that has tied down the joy of your family so that there is only sounds of mourning. There are families that never rejoice. They are crying all the time. I pray for you. Let the voice of the accuser be silenced by the blood. Be silenced by the blood. Be silenced by the blood. Hallelujah. The Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To put an end to it. Hallelujah. Everything on your list that you are trusting God for that must happen we are praying. There is an energy. There is an ability of the Holy Spirit that makes it happen. No matter how impossible it is. Oh God that answers prayer. I pray that this, this request will be turned into testimonies now. Turned into testimonies now. Turned into testimonies now. Hallelujah. Turned into testimonies. I pray for you. Finally on that list. Tonight as you sleep, as a token of victory, I pray, may God give you strange dreams and visions. Tonight, as a token of victory, I activate your spirit man to receive signals. Dreams, visions, dreams, see your victory in your dreams. See your victory in visions. See your victory in your dreams. Hallelujah. Listen, you will have strange dreams tonight. You will see yourself receiving things. As it happens in your dream, it must appear in the physical. As it happens in the spirit, it must appear in the physical. Hallelujah. There was one of our mothers here. The boy is doing architecture now. The boy came stubborn. He smokes everything, drinks everything. The woman was tired of him. And she kept coming with her heart open. One day, the fire of God fell upon that boy's head. Let me tell you, when God locates you, no, no devil, no devil. Hallelujah. You've once heard the story of promise. Promise. Remember his story. He shared it here. He came to Zaria with dreadlocks. Dreadlocks. Locks for money. Dreadlocks and earrings. That's when he came to Zaria. But when the fire fell, see what the fire can do. The fire can change anybody. Let me tell you something. Please, add the list of your unsaved loved ones if you have not done so. Don't say God cannot change them. Who told you? Saul was on his way to Damascus fire fell on him i like you to pray and say lord anyone in my family who is not saved may fire fall on them this night lift your voice and pray one minute my father must be saved my mother must be saved an encounter an encounter an encounter an encounter give them dreams let them see Jesus. Visions of heaven. Visions of hell. Give them encounters. Pray for your brother. Pray for your sister. We snatch them from the hands of alcohol, pornography, immorality. We snatch them from the gates of hell. In the name of Jesus, we snatch them. We release the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. Pray for your father. Pray for your mother. Hallelujah. Revelations 5 verse 12. We're rounding up. Please as you go back, listen. Let's use this fasting period 
to pray for our loved ones don't complain about them there is a spirit making them behave the way they are behaving stop attacking individuals challenge those spirits wake up in the night don't just know your way this is a period of spiritual awakening one o'clock two o'clock lake tebaratada knock the gates of heaven lord i i take this stubborn lady i bring her before the altar and let the fire fall on them don't sit down and be discussing and say you see you need to stop following men that's not the way out solve the problem there are spirits that manipulate the destinies of men revelations 5 verse 12 saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive what power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor the bible says by humility are riches and honor i prophesy to you in the name of jesus christ because of the spirit of humility upon you may the god that i serve lift you ay, 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 ay. where men have laughed at you and buried your case like lazarus we call that case out and we say it's the season of exaltation everything dying in your life i speak to it in this year of multiplied grace and influence rise to a new level rise to a new dimension prophetically rise to a new dimension spiritually rise to a new dimension financially rise to a new dimension hallelujah please sit down for one minute and have the prophetic focus for tomorrow it gets hotter by the day and i'm encouraging us please from tomorrow wednesday down till friday please don't miss the meetings again because it's going to be prophetic we have been establishing principles now from tomorrow we are going to be confronting things controlling spirits territorial powers are we together we are not just teaching principles again is rising hotter because there are entities who are alive and can hear us we need to force them to give way for the opening of our destiny so please please if you can invite your family members you no know, even if they are stubborn just leave them they can be playing around just leave them there when the fire falls and that spirit that is responsible leaves them they will step into a new dimension hallelujah tomorrow the prophetic focus we are going to be praying the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers there is no man that can rise to any way of worth without a connection to another man the breakthrough of every man is in the hands of another man the employment of everybody is in the hands of somebody every billion that will come to your account is in somebody's account already it won't fall from heaven but there is a mystery that connects men write these two scriptures we have to pray please i'd like you to pay attention tomorrow by god's grace we'll keep more time please those conducting when you come do everything you have to do fast so that we can have the prayer session and i want us to really stretch and pray because you need a man introduced in your life this week there is somebody that must appear to wipe your tears somebody shared with me a testimony today it is something i can't share here many of you will not even believe it a breakthrough god just brought somebody and just connected him i'm talking of all time millions just came like rain for doing nothing that's what the same way a wicked man can come into your life and not just subtract divide your life into two the lady was behaving well until a stupid boy came into her life and divided her life a gentleman was doing well until a very bad girl came into his life satan uses men to destroy men god uses men to build men are we together tomorrow we are going to also be seeing the prophetic implication of association please listen that you are not a true christian if it does not affect your association don't say i'm the only one the rest are drinking but i'm not taking it no 
if you are a child of God, your atmosphere matters in your life. Please don't miss it. There are people who must hear this message. Second Samuel. Second Samuel, the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Second Samuel 9, verse 1 to 11. You read there the story of Mephibosheth. Mark chapter 2. Those who will be leading it will expound on it. Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. Second Samuel 9, verse 1 to 11. Please, we give this prophetic focus so that you can pray. Right? You pray. So beginning from tonight, when you go back, you begin to pray, Lord, who are the men that must appear in my life? As a sister, you pray, not just husband. Who are the people who must show up in my life? There are some of us who have seen patterns in our lives. The moment God is about to lift you, certain people show up. They call you. Former relationships. How are you now? Can you come to church? Are we together? And strange things happen. And if God grants us grace, either tomorrow or next, we will consider unwanted partners. Wicked spirits that visit us. We are not just talking of destiny helpers like just people coming. There are destiny killers and we need to identify them and deal with them. There are many people, when God is about to lift you, a strange man who claims he knows you, comes to you in the dream, sleeps with you or does all kinds of things and you get up, somebody who was going to bless you will say, I've changed my mind. They told you it does not matter. See what is happening in your life. We are going to deal with it in the name of Jesus. By the grace of God, we believe the full gospel in Koinonia. We will deal with everything that should be dealt with. Many ladies are under the trap of this thing I'm telling you. It's just that we are not sincere in church. So everybody will just claim, they don't say, just act as if nothing is happening. Something is happening and there is a mystery to it. Hallelujah. Someone will ask you out, about to marry you, say, let's go and see your parents. That strange man comes in and say, you are playing with me. You wake up in the morning and the brother says, I don't know what happened, but something is convicting me that you're a wicked lady. I don't want you. Whereas you're a kind, beautiful, nice worker in the house of God. It's not just about saying, God, give me this, give me that. There are spirits, strangers that come to connect us. This is the mystery of things like fibroid. This, this demonic growth all over the bodies of people. And if there is anybody here having anything planted in you, I'm prophesying it before we close. Anything that is planted in your body that did not come from God in the name of Jesus Christ, like that one fell before the ark, it must flush out of your body tonight. I'm saying it again, it must flush out of your body tonight. Every stranger who has planted any growth, lump on your breast, whatever it is around your body, I just felt like doing this before we leave. And in the name of Jesus, I'm saying it, any growth around any part of your body, from your head to your toe, sponsored by any wicked stranger, we judge it tonight in the name of Jesus. Use this fasting period to fight everything that is not of God. Don't say it's not paining me. It must go. It must go. Because it may not pain you now until it starts growing and they will tell you it's cancer. Nip it and kill it there. And it must die. Hallelujah. It says from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffered violence. It advances forcefully. And only forceful men advance it so please don't tolerate anything anything that mocks you take it to the list anything that mocks you take it to the my eye i mean i'm, I'm feeling pain take it there don't sit down and say it's all right it happens every dry season take it there it must be dealt with hallelujah yes ladies please take it seriously don't say oh my own is something i'm used to i grew up with it like that please write it and say god this is not normal i've been keeping quiet about it but now i won't be silent with it hallelujah tomorrow i'd like us to listen to two messages please activating breakthroughs the ministry of destiny help us no matter how many times you've listened to it please 
I'm going to listen to it this night, almost right away when I go back. Please listen to it. I teach there on the ministry of Destiny Helpers. And that's going to be our emphasis. Please fast. I beg you in the name of Jesus. Uh, the children can fast maybe till afternoon and then you stop. If you are pregnant or you are on advice medication, you may avoid the fast but still pray. Praise the Lord. Make sure that everybody participates fully. Participate fully. Tell your family members. Tell them there is a fasting period. If they can't fast for seven days, let's take the last three days and stretch it very well. Let's take the last three days. Hallelujah. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Let's not joke with it. God will grant us grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Please rise up on your feet. We honor everyone who has made it from far and near. I pray that my God will bless you. There are so many people. When I was coming, I was saying I'm so touched by the diligence of people. People standing almost every day. Please make sure you invite all your loved ones and tell them fire is burning on this mountain. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. After the grace, I'd like you to hug 20 people. Greet everyone around you if you can and tell them the Lord is taking you higher in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are still praying. I'd like us to hold hands all across, inside and outside. Make contact with someone. For the next 10 minutes, I'd like you to pray in the spirit from the depth of your heart. You are speaking mysteries. Please, please, pray. Lift your voice. Make sure you are making contact with somebody. Make sure you are making contact with somebody in the spirit. En krakata tapa kata lekete prakata regete segede segede makoroposka e prapata karato soto prekete kete segede bo segede bo meka proskaria takata ba men skoparia taba segede bene de bo regeto kaprata kakabasha manta pratas kata prate kete bo prente kete papa papa manto skoto pakata segede karata bo. Em protosko pranda kata shekete porobash peros ke varianda bas kata bali e krosko para kata shekete kete me ko protosko to prekete kete lekete shaba baba 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 em para ko so baba baba shakata sebele ko so prende kata e ka shekete tetete tetete shekete pray 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 outside make sure you are praying Make sure you are praying everywhere. Hold the hands of someone. You are making contact in the spirit. Seke pakata tata. Leke te proskopos. Emba po supati kete lekete. Kete le barabada shikete. Lem protosko protos shikete. Prampo soso pekete. Emba rabasi kete pekete ke lebo koshba. Maka pras kata mamaba. Bendo shikata he. Arise in the midst of your people, O mighty one. Men do seke po shatani kete barakatos ko pashia enketes ke seke seke se masiko ko skavaria zaproto soto pekete embra pa ko to shopekete nekete re pashia. Don't be tired. Pray, 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 pray. Seke teleba. You are betting results in the spirit. You are betting results in the spirit. So that your profiting will appear unto all. So that your profiting will appear unto all. Abakata bakata rekete. Shekete kete. Rakata bakarato so pregede. Lekete braba baba baba baba. Leka braba to subrana. Prende soto prekete keretete. Sekete bo shoprende baba bashia, e prakoto shoprekete lekete shopras kaba shopras kaba makaba reketo shubalaha membros kariada sekete te 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 enka pato shoprekete te te nanda prako shoprekete rapa tu shoprende te 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 e karato soto prekete ke sekete. I'll be it in the spirit.
Hallelujah. Listen, if you know the ancient fountains, the, the breakthroughs, the alignments that are happening to the destinies of men, is after this fasting you will know that every door can open. Every door can open. Believe me when I tell you this. Listen, the trouble is we have not exerted the spiritual force the mysteries of the kingdom that will cause the doors to open i like you to say every door can open please say every door can open keys of the kingdom we the keys of the kingdom hallelujah hallelujah We are still praying. I learned early in my life the strange, I call it the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. That between your present level and your next level, there is a strange helper. No matter how anointed you are, no matter how blessed you are, if that destiny helper does not show up, you will die with your talents. It's all in scripture. When Satan wants to destroy you, he sends men to you. When God wants to lift you, he sends men. Destiny helpers are men who have been equipped, ordained, and assigned to your destiny. Not just sent, equipped, ordained, and send to your destiny. Destiny helpers are not free will charity operators. Those who just come and have a spirit of benevolence. No. They are equipped. They are ordained. They are instructed. Assigned. To take your destiny to the next level. It is God that blesses. There's no doubt. But God blesses people through people. Are we together now? It was Melchizedek that blessed Abraham as touching the authority of heaven. And he said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High. I make you possessor of the heavens and the earth. And his destiny opened up. As great as Abraham was. Please, we are still praying. Tonight's prayer is very serious. The fastest way to step into greatness is your connection with destiny helpers. They will cover for your ignorance. They will cover for your limitations. One destiny helper can wipe your tears forever. We are going to pray. 
We are going to pray on three types of destiny helpers. When I mention them, we we'll pray. Hallelujah. I call the first set divine connectors. Listen. These kinds of destiny helpers, they don't have money, they don't have influence, they are not rich, but they know how to lead you to the person you need. Hear me? They have no influence. They may not even be born again, but they know it was a little slave girl, had no anointing to heal, had no access, but she had been hearing that every time men went to a strange man called Elisha, something happened and she said sir i know i'm only a slave but if you will listen to my suggestion there is a man there is a man pastor alpha was it ben got shared about the the servant who told saul he said there is a man of god who can solve our problems listen there are people who must show up in your life they can't help you personally but they can show you this is the way this is the way lift your voice and say in the name of jesus Every man, please, are you praying? Say in the name of Jesus. Every man assigned to connect me, to show me my life right now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Connect us. Connect us. They cannot help you directly, but they can show you who will help you. They cannot help you directly. They don't have answers to your challenges. They can show you. Appear in my destiny. Are you praying? Are you praying? We call them forth. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Meet me at my place of confusion. Meet me at my place of influence. Men of influence. They have ability. They have access. They have power. Their job is to endorse you. Their job is to rob their credibility on you. To cause your voice to be heard. Listen, let me tell you something. If you want to rise up by yourself, that journey may take you forever. A man who has established credibility can lift you up. John was a prophet who had credibility and he declared Jesus. He said, I stand and stake my credibility. This is the Lamb of God. Make no confusion about it. There are men in your life who can stand and use their leverage and speak over your business and speak over your life and say, this lady is a wife material. I stake my reputation. I know that any man that marries this lady will no longer crash and somebody will come a godly brother somebody can say although she read physics i've seen her integrity with money take her to the bank and make her an operations manager by the power of the holy spirit we call them forth hallelujah hallelujah listen the bible says the prophecy over jesus was that he would be buried in a virgin tomb. Are we together? When Jesus died on the cross, no man had the economic power to demand for his body. But there was a strange man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea. That guy had access to the king. He had access to men of influence. And the Holy Ghost used him. Are we together now? And he demanded on the strength of his power, his wealth, his access. He demanded for the body of Jesus. The disciples, they knew the prophecy, but they did not have access. Listen, there are men of access who must speak for you. If you speak by yourself, at the level you are, your voice cannot be heard. But a man of influence can step in and use his credibility and speak. The Bible says, on account of that, they took the body of Jesus to his tomb, buried him there. Otherwise, there will be no resurrection. We talk so much about redemption, but we forget Joseph of Arimathea. A man who used his influence. It was because of the influence of Joseph. He said, call my father and everybody. Let them come and eat. Otherwise, they would have died and there will be no covenant that will bring Christ. Influence. Influence. Influence is very, very important. It can give you in one day. Listen. 
the race is not to the swift koinonia hear me let me speak to you the race is not to the swift the battle is not to the strong there are places you need to enter admit once and for all that your level of credibility and your track record cannot take you there listen years ago this is a true story the there was someone who was going to nda listen and there is a high level that they must accept are we together now and that guy went you know to nda and they told him he did all the tests and he did well but they said you are too short and when he came then they told the emir of zaria and the emir of zaria wrote a letter and said they should go and tell the people in nda that the emir of zaria has added the height of the boy can you imagine what do you think will happen to that boy that somebody who is obviously short Emia, I stand in my office and I add his height. Brothers and sisters, somebody can speak over your father. He says it's important, it's not important anything. Somebody can just say, come. I know a man, true to it, he was serving when he came to Abuja, broke and suffering. And then he just came and was praying that God will help him. One day, just coming into a house, he saw some people discussing the business of a land they were going to sell a plot a, a, a land 720 million and they said no they can't do this business with one person they need to be witnesses and they carried this guy and brought him inside just for being a witness part of his commission was seven million that's how he started for doing nothing don't think i'm just joking brothers and sisters that you are suffering does not mean that's the way it should be there are roots there are men who can speak for you that job you are trying and trying listen i was advising a few people some weeks ago and i told them i said go and meet certain people and bring shop right to kaduna and you know do this do this do some business with them and they sat down they were saying we're too small and the next thing i had that one man of influence on hearing that idea walked with some boys and told them i am ready to show them everything let these people work i think um, whether the governor or something now does intervene in the whole thing and now they are trying to bring shop right here and whoever by mistake was part of that process even if you were just a witness i saw it your life will never remain the same i'd like you to pray and say lord i'm tired of delay say it i'm tired of stagnation i am gifted but i'm not moving forward whoever needs to endorse me for my voice to be heard at a global scale i call them into my life koinonia lift your voice and pray lord i'm gifted i have presentations i have papers i have publications but there's no man to endorse me i have gifts I can sing. I'm diligent. I graduated with first class and two one. But there is no man to help me. Send men of influence in this season. Send men of influence. Send men of influence. Men of influence. Send men of influence. Send men of influence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The third kinds of destiny helpers are called gifted people. Gifted people. There is nothing more frustrating in leadership than to have hands that are incompetent 
are we together hands that are not capable spiritually intellectually psychologically and otherwise the best brands in the world have become the best brands in the world because by some kind of system they have been able to attract to their organizations the best and the brightest of minds are we together now it's amazing how your idea and creativity can skyrocket when a gifted man steps into your life and the bible says the gift of a man makes room there are gifted people we need in every area in ministry in business in leadership i like you to call them into your life because what you are struggling with is somebody's specialty what you are laboring laboring and saying if only i can do this there is a gifted man a gifted woman that can come into your life your family your business lift your voice and go for gifted people go ahead and pray lord i call gifted people into my life into this ministry gifted people gifted people talented people anointed people pray pray business people pray leaders pray gifted people in my life gifted people they will make your life easy hallelujah hallelujah listen listen it's amazing how long simple things will take you if a gifted man does not show up in your life are we together the time we spend to get certain results is too long for that kind of result when a gifted man shows up in your life he can make life easy for you are we together now very easy a man who shows up i remember when when koinonia started you know I'm not, I'm not good in all these savings, money, money thing, accounting. I don't have that kind of grace. And I know how initially we started and we had to just get people to work in the department. And it was a struggle at a point. But then I remember we began to pray. And we said, Lord, send gifted people. And I'm telling you, the, the, the people in the finance department today are amazing their creativity, their concepts, their insights. There were times when we were trusting God even for the stage and decoration and the rest. Lots of things, transitions, people were leaving and we said, Lord, send gifted people. There must be creative people that can take us to the next dimension. Hallelujah. And we prayed them into this ministry. We prayed the worship team. We prayed everything. You have to pray in your life and say, Lord, I know it's not this hard. This 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 hardship is a sign that a gifted person has not yet appeared. I call him. I call that gifted person. Lift your voice and pray. Till we young people, we really do not know how to talk to great people. It's an art you must learn. Hallelujah. P please hold on with the song. We'll, we'll sing it when we're praying. I want everybody to hear what I'm saying because this is very important. You need to learn how to talk to great people. Are we together? You can get a job just by speaking well. Are we together? A man can look at you and say, you are, you are very polite, you are disciplined. You know how to talk. Many of us have lost opportunities. There were families we were once connected to. And maybe the parents in those families had great plans for us. But because we did not know how to respond to greatness, they saw our attitude as disdainful a, 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 an expression of ingratitude and they etched us out of our breakthrough we are going to pray tonight i don't just want us to pray foolishly we must pray intelligently because we need to understand this are we together now you need to learn how to talk to great people for instance in a place scattered like this there are great men and women of influence in this place many of us now you want to meet them for things outside of ministry activities but you do not know the protocol that leads to access 
you just walk up to somebody and say jimmy honestly eh, i don't know what to tell you but the way things are right now eh, i want to learn about this thing i want to learn about this can you teach me about leadership but what do you know you see he will he will just smile at you but you will never get his best the bible said the labor of the fool we are every one of them because they do not know the road to the city hallelujah thou son of david not jesus thou son of david have mercy on me i never meet great people and make that the last meeting between me and them i i taught myself the law of protocol how to respond to the presence of greatness joseph shaved his beard when he came before the king he didn't start running his mouth and say king have you heard of what i've done in the last two years in the prison he kept quiet until he was asked the question that's what many of us would have done and it backfires on you and the throne that would have been for you you go back to the prison you went somewhere and somebody said what are you doing he says sir i, I had first class in fact i need to even tell you it's not just that it's if not because of my father and his irresponsible attitude right now how about will i be coming to your office why are you doing for me like this this is somebody you want to help you you have prayed you have fasted but you do not understand the law of protocol we are going to pray and say lord help me to manage greatness when it comes when i step into the presence of great people teach me the wisdom to maintain access with them lift your voice and pray it looks like a simple prayer point but it holds a key i'm telling you to the next level of your life please every time a wealthy man or an influential man appears in your life never bombard him with your needs you kill the opportunity for access are we together now that's what a lot of people do the moment you see a millionaire oh it's to me it's a millionaire after all you say sir honestly i hope you don't mind i've heard the apostle talk about you many times so honestly if i tell you i'm not even god knows i'm lying you will never be the friend of that person wealthy people are not fools they kept laws to rise there are we together I like Rebecca. Let me tell you how she became a wife. She solved the problem of somebody. Immediately he came and he said, look, if I, I need a husband, and if you are here to just play games, she greeted him and she knew he had come from a distance. And she said, before we have any discussion, I don't even want to know why you are here. I know you are thirsty. Just wait. And he kept watching her. She was solving his problems, meeting his needs. And afterwards he said, God, this is it. Where are your parents? straight up she would have lost the opportunity are we together now listen please hear me there are very few people here who have not met men that can change your life but you lost the opportunity without knowing you met very influential people in 10 minutes you told them sir our rent <laughs> mommy i've come again honestly if you can just give me money to buy one bag of rice i will never come here again and every time they think about you they associate you to pain and they see you as a nuisance and so even when you are coming to greet them they say sorry we are busy while they need to go out you will never meet great people and start talking about your needs when you meet great people the first thing to do is give them an impression you recognize their sacrifice and you honor them you will have unlimited access they will be the ones to ask you what should i do for you is god giving us wisdom tonight when i meet blessed people i don't talk about i just tell them oh sir i mean this is exceptional i saw the things that you have done and you are you are a great man sir such intelligence and you see the person laughing i'm squaring up I say by the way what do you do and you see the person laughing and any other discussion will make sense from that point you want to come and meet a man of god and you sit and say sir i've been to many men of god let me just tell you many they have disappointed me me too it's just somebody that told me there's that you are around i'm here and honestly i have I'm, I'm not no marriage you are everything around my life is not working well do you think that you will get results from that man you have given him an impression like you are one of many of those noise makers i have come to test you the man will say please let's pray lord bless this lady go out there is an many of us do not know that this is how we receive from god listen to how jesus said we should pray our father you are in heaven we honor you not our needs we honor you hallowed be your name we know you have a need and we focus on it your kingdom come 
then he says your will be done we are passionate about your will then he says lord remember we have daily bread so give us our daily bread jesus your jesus taught you how to pray not we just go to prayer blah, 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 blah. lord rose of sharon land of prayer, oh god i've come again i've come i'm knocking on the gates of heaven you are laughing but many people have gotten things at a platter of gold without praying for it just because they knew how to respond to great people how many lecturers would have wiped the tears of many students if they understood honor we are going to pray that this spirit of honor will land on you for real. Listen, listen, listen. We really have to pray. This attitude of disregarding people's success will destroy us. Never see a successful person and trivialize him. You see a mother with five children. You've never gotten pregnant. And you are treating it as if, as if the children just came out of her head. You, you, are not, you are not going to receive any favor from that person. You look at a woman old enough to be your mother and you're like, Man, how are you? She says, my, my son or my daughter, how are you? Fine. Can we help you? You see that kind of attitude. Whereas that person holds a key to bless your life. Who is God speaking to you? This attitude of dishonor that has shut the doors of helpers. You are going to say, Lord, I make a vow that I will honor the sacrifices of people and never trivialize my access to them. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Pray. Lord, you brought a professor to my life. You brought a doctor to my life. Who can change my story? But my dishonor has kept me down. You brought a man of God into my life. Who can speak one word and change my destiny. But my dishonor kept me far from their grace. Pray. You brought a government official. A politician. Who could recommend me to a place in Abuja and wipe my tears but my carelessness and my attitude of dishonor kept me down I'd like you to pray and say Lord give me wisdom to know how to honor my helpers grace to know us once somebody is higher than you in anointing in grace you treat them well but once you meet your contemporaries how do you treat the house helps in your house some of us ladies you treat them like pieces of rats I will never forget a man who used to be um, he used to be my auntie's gr driver growing up but he used to then pick us in school and um, I didn't quite like the way the man was being treated he was a great man nice man sincere man but he wasn't treated very well I remember one time going to the boys quarters in my auntie's house and the guy was boiling yam yam and palm oil and I was very happy we were talking with him I was so happy I remember they flogged me that day just for relating with that man are we together some years later one time in our house there, i was the only one at home and there was a horn at the gate two story and then when i went i looked at the man he had added weight and at, at that time there was one heavy bench 190 and he was the one who came in it and he came out with his three-quarter trouser god lifted him and he was driving i think one of the top directors uh, i think in transcorp hilton or some top, something like that one of those top hotels and you know those drivers are even richer than bank managers because whatever remains is their own of anything a meeting whatever and i looked at him and when he came out you know he was saying he just came to greet my parents and all of that now he's married even has a child and then he looked at one green beetle that he used to drive and he nodded he said this world is a small world as young as I was, I learned wisdom. Hallelujah. The king of our village, you know, there are branches just like maybe the Eze one of Saria. So the king of our village, the one who represents the people in Jos, before he became king, he came to our house one day in the night. It was raining. And you know, Jos can be very cold. True story. And when he came, my parents were not around. Nobody was around. I came to him. I said, well done, sir. May God bless you, sir. You know, greeted him. I said, do you need tea, sir? I said, no. I said, please, I insist. This is what my mother would have done if she were around. I would give you tea. Do you need coffee? Do you need what? And I brought all those things. That one act, the man has become a king today. Every time he chorus my name and when he found out I was in ministry, 
One time I went to church and I took one to go and greet him. And he looked at me and he blessed me. He said, the day I hear that anybody says anything wrong against you, I will curse the person. See? Fifty Naira has changed the life of people. Who knew how to honor people? Listen, never disregard people. Time flies. Never disregard people. Because your father is a millionaire, your mother is a this, you treat people like rats. One day you will open the office where you are looking for a job and they are the ones sitting at the table. They will say, welcome. Are we together? Many of us have this attitude of the Bible calls it seditions. Party spirit. We are the committee of wealthy people. We are the committee of those who are elite. We are the committee of those who grew up abroad. We are the committee of those who do this. And then we treat people bad. That's why I make it a point of duty. And I've trained the leaders here. We honor all men. All men. I know no man after the flesh. Of course, honor to whom honor is due. But I'll, I'll never refuse to see somebody and say because you don't have a seat to give me or your mother is a million i will never do that i have learned the art of honor i play with children you see me and some of our children here after koinonia i hug all of them and i'm happy not just because i'm self-centered i love them this is the reason why we provide free bus transport i know that your coming here is not because we are better than you it's only an election of grace so we sow into your life as a symbol of honor you are going to pray and say lord give me the eyes and the grace to honor all kinds of people regardless of their backgrounds lift your voice and pray please pray god is giving us deliverance tonight pray lord i have treated people badly I've created unhealthy standards. There are people who have showed up in our lives. Very ordinary people. They had things to tell us that would have blessed us. But our pride did not allow us to learn from them. And now accessing those same people is difficult. It was easier before. Are we together? The lady wanted to tell you there's somebody that is liking you and considering marriage. You threw the person around and say, I know who I am. Now you see who you are because of that carelessness. Is God speaking to us? I know how, how many times I saw my loved ones, those sincere, they lost precious opportunities because they ignored certain people. Before my father retired, his last job in Lagos, it was a recommendation from somebody who used to be his junior. He was part of those who interviewed him for employment. And the guy later left that firm and then he went somewhere. And when they were talking about somebody, he said, Ah, I know my boss before. He used to, you know, do this and he's a man of integrity, etc., etc. Who have you ignored that shut the door of your next level? Because the person came to greet you. Or you came to his house and you drank gari. Oh, I don't drink gari. I eat fried turkey and, and all of that. I don't drink gari. Some of us, this is what happens. We go to visit some of our elderly ones. And they tell you, sorry, oh my son, this is the little I have. And we carry this pomposity and carelessness. I am this, I am, I'm the, I mean, I'm a, I'm a rich person. I'm wealthy. Money is at work. Wealth and riches are in my house. I won't take gari. Whereas... In that silence and that humility, God would have opened the door for you. One more time, you are going to say, Lord, give me grace to see and recognize the help in people who seem to be lower than me. Lift your voice and pray. Give me the eyes, the grace to see, the grace to see, the grace to see. Please, I want to challenge you, everyone hearing me inside and outside. I'm telling you this, the fastest way to rise into greatness is to master the art of relationships. You will rise to levels you cannot account for. Relationships. Never play with relationships. There are people who mean so much to you. Look like a fool to keep the relationships. Because when you lose it, it is cheaper for your ego to be strong than for you to look for their alternatives. Hallelujah. We are praying, but God is giving us strategies. Some of us will need to send text messages.
to certain people some of us may even be our loved ones you think your mother didn't go to school and because of that she cannot add anything to your life she said my daughter please can i talk to you there's something i want to tell you mommy please just calm down you cannot even use a phone and call where what do you want to tell me she may have a blessing upon her mouth that she can speak in broken english she may speak it in your language and it will still work for you it's a lesson that god taught me i have mastered the art of honoring people i don't care whether the person is rich poor high low i pay attention and i have i have, I have programmed my spirit to discern when the information they are supplying to you is the answer to your prayer hallelujah the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers you need it in every area of your life all these prayer requests we are bringing all these mysteries we are exploring when you go back still study them and pray them into your life in this year of multiplied grace and influence you need it you need it you need the gift of people the blessings of influential people to wipe your tears and change your life i don't know which of the days a lady here shared a testimony that someone i think came and volunteered to pay the school fees or something of somebody i think there was a testimony like that until university days imagine that kind of thing that's the blessings of a helper if you want to achieve everything in life by your personal efforts get ready to die young are we together the last prayer point you're going to say lord i've struggled by myself i admit i need help send help send help lift your voice pray lord i have hallelujah i'd like us to take the prayer focus for tomorrow before we prophesy over our request tomorrow down to friday will be three amazing days that's why i'm taking our time to talk compared to what we are going to be doing tomorrow thursday and friday i will call all what we have been doing just introduction just a warm-up to keep our spirits believe me from tomorrow to friday will be intense warfare intense warfare hallelujah tomorrow we are going to be examining the mystery of spiritual gates and doors the mystery of spiritual gates and doors i will be showing you the secret to accessing territories the secret to accessing resources listen every territory has gates and doors if the gate of a territory is not open to you you can be in that territory but every advantage will run away from you. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He was not just speaking to people. He was speaking to that territory. Hear ye him. And from that day, everywhere Jesus went to, there were people to hear him. Listen, please. Let me give you scriptures. Psalm 24, from verse 7 to 9. He said, lift up your hands. Oh ye gates. Every man's destiny has gates. Every destiny has doors. Are we together? It's a mystery. Every business has gates. Kabala Koshaya. Every ministry in a territory has gates. A man of God can suffer forever until the gates of a city is open in ancient times before you enter the city just like we have especially in the north they had what we call city gates if the city gate were closed over you you did not have access to the city tomorrow i'm going to be showing us the 
mystery of spiritual access how to break through barriers how to break through limitations you reign you ancient zion's king god you are mighty on your throne Mountains of the deep and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Sing, thou spirit of the deep and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Isaiah 45, verse 1. We are going to examine it tomorrow. Isaiah 45 verse 1 He said before Cyrus will be opened the two lift gates and they shall not be shut It was Samson who went and opened the gate he carried the gate of a city and took it to a mountain Brothers and sisters hear me Please tomorrow is going to be an intense session of warfare and deliverance not just for yourself but for your family members there are things you are tired of and we are going to contend I will be sharing with you keys and mysteries a man's destiny can be tied down close the Bible says to open up the gate to those that are bound there are people who are moving physically but spiritually there are doors and gates that have closed don't say what I'm telling you is not necessary there are pastors who the gates and the doors of their ministry has been shut down. People will come and receive miracles and run away and they don't know why. There is a mystery. Gates and doors. Now listen, I want every lady, listen, every lady, every woman, tomorrow there is a special prayer I'm going to pray for you because every woman is a gate in the spirit. Are we together? Every woman that you have a womb is a sign that you are a gate. Not that you have a gate. Yourself, you are a gate. That's why if a ministry is about to explode, it is, it is characterized in the similitude of women. Any ministry that women do not appear before will never open. Because a woman is a gate. The only gate that brings another life is a mystery. I'll be sharing with you certain deep things tomorrow. A woman is a gate that means there is no tying the destiny of any man without the permission of a woman you will see what will happen tomorrow when we begin to pray because you will know that for as long as you came through the womb of a woman it means your gate was once opened something shut it and by the authority of a woman that's why the bible talks of wailing women not wailing men there is something about the cry of a woman to the heavens that can open the gate of a city the first woman to announce the entrance of jesus to the earth the first evangelist was a woman not a man when jesus resurrected it was mary that saw him she said Rabboni. the first person who saw the resurrected christ women this is why satan manipulates women to destroy them they are gates See, we live in a world surrounded by a lot of spiritual ignorance. And we men of God are the ones who have deceived people. Because we tell them these things don't matter. And people foolishly stumble around. But the Bible says, the kingdom is like a man who lost his treasure. And the first thing he did was he lit his candle and began to search. There are women who are gates. There are people who are gates. Tomorrow I'll be sharing with you the mystery of barrenness. I will tell you why the womb of people can be shut. It has nothing to do with just a wayward lifestyle. When you understand the mystery of a woman as gate, you will understand what fibroid is all about. Fibroid is not just something that swells a woman's stomach. No, believe me when I tell you, fibroid is a mystery. It's an intercourse between a spirit and a human agency. It's a mimicking of pregnancy. 
it is that interaction with spirit beings that brought them what we call HIV acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. The Bible says there were these strange beings, the Nephilim. Please don't miss tomorrow. I will be showing you a lot of things from scripture. He said these men came and they slept with the daughters of men. Have you read that in your Bible? And they gave birth to a species of people with superhuman abilities. Nimrod Kush was one of them. Oh, the king of Bashan was one of them. Goliath of God was one of them. Unusual people with unusual abilities. They are still on the earth. That's why the Bible said there are many kinds of bodies. Don't be deceived. It's only those who know that reign. So tomorrow, I want you to pray. Tomorrow we are on a marathon right till Friday. And it's not just to starve ourselves. There is a mystery. I'd like you to pray all through. And you are going to say, Lord, the two lift gate of my destiny, it must be open. Gate of my destiny, it must be open. You know, any woman that has suffered from barrenness, please tell her tomorrow is a day of deliverance. Please, it's not just receive, receive, open your womb. No, there is spiritual intelligence. Spiritual intelligence. We are going to be forcing gates and doors to be open. I saw the gates of my family tied to nonsense. My father struggled like an armed robber struggle with all of his efforts preachers lied to me they said everything is all right but i looked at it and i said things are not all right faith is not foolishness so please as you come tomorrow if you can come with your loved ones come but just tell them tomorrow is a time of intense warfare i'll be handling it myself and we're going to be praying we're going to be challenging the things that have tied us down I shared with you my story. We're closing now. How that I used to be oppressed by demon spirits. Many people here are going through that same experience. But the church, we have trained ourselves to lie to ourselves. So everybody say everything is alright. Just assume it's, it's not alright. I'm telling you this. A lady goes to bed, a guy goes to bed, and strange beings. If it was alright, you would not even see them in the first place. That they had access. It's a sign that something is wrong. My own was not just dreams. I would see the spirit. I was preaching, praying for the sick, healing people. But those spirits were still oppressing me. At a point in my life, I said, I'm not going to lie to myself again. The day you become dissatisfied with status quo, that day the devil will leave. Hallelujah. So please, we are going to pray. All these strange, mysterious experiences that have brought bad luck to people that have shut the doors of destiny the manifestation of spirit husband spirit wife these strange entities some of you wake up with all kinds of marks on your body do you know what it means for a thing to mark you in the spirit and it appears physically that's 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 a technology of witchcraft that must be understood something marks you in the spirit and you get up a lady sent me a text today that they saw a snake a, a real snake it fell on one of her roommates and then the snake disappeared they told people they thought it was a lie today in the morning the snake beat their neighbor in another room he's dead now i know you thought it was just a snake that was roaming around from the wilderness ask jesus why he said he would trample on snakes and scorpions why did he just say you would trample on wicked things please one of the things that this prayer and fasting should do to you is create an appetite for spiritual intelligence. He said, they know not, neither will they understand. They grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course. Is it alright if we pray just one prayer point? We are going to say, Lord, as I prepare for tomorrow's prayer, reveal to me everything that is wrong in my family so that we will pray tomorrow. Please lift your voice. Visit the foundation of my family show me in dreams my god show me in visions let me know why the delay why the death the cycle of death the cycle of barrenness the cycle of stagnation our time is up but pray
Lord, as we prepare to step into intense warfare in the spirit, I inquire, I inquire, I inquire, why are people not married in my family? I inquire from you. Why is the cause of hardship still prevalent in my family? Pray to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, as you go back tonight, beginning from this night, don't ask God for give me money, give me car, leave all those things. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I need revelation. In Daniel 2 9, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. There are things God needs to show us. Please. I, there's no time I would have shared with you an encounter that I had and a song that I received. We'll do it tomorrow. A very strange encounter that I had this morning. We have to pray. I've been receiving text messages from some people. A lady sent me a text that after yesterday's prayer, immediately she laid down like three, I think maybe two or three hours. Three people appeared, appeared like in a dream and said, your grandfather did not escape us. Your father did not escape us. I'm, I'm sure she's here. He said, neither will you escape us. That was telling her that she should stop coming for this prayer in Koinonia. Said it to her face. You may not know what is happening here. You are paying a price for your children and your children's children. This is not just for yourself. Hallelujah. So you need to pray inquiry prayers. This is a sensitive moment. Pray intelligently. Lord, what is the secret? Don't say, Lord, when will you change my story? It's not a wise prayer. Say, Lord, I want to solve this problem once and for all. Why is it that every September somebody must die? What is it about that month? There is a mystery. Use Daniel 2.19 to pray. And say, then the mystery was revealed. Don't joke with your dreams. I've told you this. God will show you strange things. When he shows you, write them. And let's bring them tomorrow. Tomorrow fire will fall in this place. We are visiting altars of darkness. Please invite your friends and your loved ones. No matter how stubborn they are, let them come and sleep in the presence of God. But there is business to be done. You know people who have been stagnated in life. Tell them, swallow your pride and just come before the Lord. And let's flog it tomorrow. Please and please, we will provide buses but I'd like us to come tomorrow with our hearts open. We'll cut down a lot of things so that we can have time to pray strategically. Hallelujah. Please lift your requests before the God of heaven. Oh, sing thou fountains of the deep and weep you are mighty on your throne. Oh, see, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Please lift it up. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. The secret behind the challenges written on that list may it be revealed to you tonight in the name of jesus the mystery behind the challenges that have necessitated you writing the things that have brought you pain may god that i serve reveal it to you tonight the mysteries of the death be revealed tonight the mysteries of the stagnation be revealed tonight in the name of Jesus, I pray for you, every dream and encounter you've been having with no meaning and understanding, tonight I command clarity. Understand what you have seen. Understand what you are hearing. Understand what you are seeing. Understand what you are hearing. I pray for you, in the name of Jesus, as you sleep tonight, May the altars that sponsor this wickedness in the name of Jesus may the angel of judgment that proceeds from the presence of Elohim visit the altar tonight. 
Visit to tonight. Visit to tonight. Visit to tonight. Hallelujah. Hear me. Any member of your family who is being manipulated by an altar, please hear me. Your husband, your wife, your father, your relatives, I stand tonight of this apostolic anointing. Any one family member of influence of the programmings of this altar, I call that programming in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are praying for dreams. We need it. The Bible says the outpouring of the Spirit will come with dreams and visions. You need it. I'm praying for you again. The eyes that see and the ears that hear, may they be activated in your sleep tonight. The eyes that see and the ears that hear, be activated in the name of Jesus. Be activated in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Many of you wake up in the middle of the night and begin to write things. Whether you understand it or not, document it. Bring it here. Let the fire fall on it. Hallelujah. And in case, please listen. In case you have any dream as you go back now and have a strange experience that threatens you, I'd like you to wake up no matter the time. Wait, don't wait till this time. Wake up, you may be hungry, but turn to that spirit. Challenge it. Don't sit down and say until evening. Wake up and say, Now I stand under the authority of God and I challenge you. He said, Resist the devil and he will flee. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the glory. We thank you for tonight. In the name of Jesus. There's free but limited bus transport. Please, if you have vehicles, you can help other people go in around. Rise up on your feet. We are closing. Our marathon fast. Let's allow from 11. Because I know some of you have not broken your fast. So we allow from 11 so that you can rush back and quickly take water or whatever. Please, it is stretch till Friday by 12. Till Friday by 1 in the afternoon. Now listen, please, listen. Just give me a few minutes and we'll be done. If you are pregnant, don't do this. Just do your normal fasting. If you are on serious medication, work as advised by the doctor. Tomorrow by evening before you come, you may not have enough strength. So you can put warm water. Don't take water in the fridge. It will hurt you. Warm water, if you have honey or glucose, you can just mix it a little and then you take it, you will not die. Please, try, do, and do your best to endure. The Lord will grant you grace. Grace is released upon you. In Jesus' name, God will do mighty things. We are praying by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Lord gave me a word. Listen, this morning, I saw a sword of judgment. That's what I saw in the morning. I saw a sword of judgment in the morning. And the Lord told me tonight there will be tearing down. There will be tearing down. I like you to be very sensitive. Hallelujah. There will be tearing down. The angel of the Lord's presence is in this place. We must be sensitive. Luke 11, please. Luke 11, 9 to 10. Just be sensitive inside and outside. The presence of God is heavy, mighty in this place. Mighty, mighty. Might. You will never be the same. Those, those gates must open. There is a mystery that will open them tonight. Believe me. So I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you will find. Let's read the third part together. One to go. It says, knock, and the door will be open. Next verse. For everyone, how many? How many? 
so the opening of the gates and doors is for how many people the bible says for everyone who asks receives it says and to him who knocks the door it didn't say may be open will be open for everyone who knocks the door will be open yes ago the lord taught me the mystery of gates and doors listen every territory has gates and doors every destiny has gates and doors every life has gates and doors this is the mystery of oppression and stagnation that a man can be moving physically but in the realm of the spirit the gate has not been opened and if the gate has not been opened you can forever languish in a particular situation let's read just one more scripture and then we'll pray acts chapter 12 let's look at 9 and 10 acts chapter 12 this was the miracle i saw pastor alpha sharing it very amazing he says and he went out let's start from okay and he went out and followed him listen and wish not that it was true which was done by the angel but thought he saw a vision verse 10 and when and they were past the first and the second word and they came to the iron gate that leads to where there are gates that lead to territories are we together he says there is a gate that leads to the city he took him to the gate and says this is the symbol of access to a city this is the symbol of access to a realm a dimension of operation and the bible says which opened to them of its own accord and they went out and passed through one street and forthwith the angel departed now you see the ministry of angels in opening gates for people the bible says all of a sudden an angel comes to, to paul and then begins to lead him I wish we had time I would have shared a lot of things with you but we are going to pray there are angels assigned that open the gates of the destinies of men if there are gates then there are watchers and gatekeepers it was Habakkuk that taught us in chapter 2 verse 1 he says I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower they were watchmen they monitor the entrance of things in and out of the city gate. And every time they perceive danger, they would alert the people. Danger was coming. We are going to pray. Before we even start any ministration, I'd like you to cry and say, Every angel assigned to open the gates of my destiny by the power that is in the name of Jesus, I activate your ministry. Go ahead and pray. Please go ahead and pray. There are angels assigned. Ke baba sha baba ba. Rante kapo supata kashebele deba. Brata karito supati gede. Every angel assigned to open the gate of my destiny, the gate of my ministry, the gate of a territory for me. I command that you be open. I command that you be open. I command that you be open. I command that you be open by the ministry of angels. By the ministry of angels. Shabadi kete baladaba. Are you praying? Skapete kete barosu to bakata. Enkra basko preish kene bosh. Krabati kete baladabash. hallelujah isaiah 60 verse 11 isaiah 60 hmm. therefore 
Thy gates shall be open continually. It says they shall not be shut day or night. That men who would have come before and were stopped, but because the gate is now open, access is given that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. He said, and their kings may be brought. When you capture the king of a city, you are in charge of that territory. So he uses the kings in similitude that I will not only give you treasures of men, I will give you access to territories. He says, therefore thy gates shall be continually open. Hallelujah. The gate of a man's destiny can be shut. Please hear me. The gate of a family can be shut. So many believers, well-meaning, hard-working, serious, God-fearing people are moving but doors and gates are being shut. Shut against them. Restricts progress. They cannot step into territories. But tonight, this ministry by the grace of God is able to do the little we are doing because we have mastered the art of opening the gates of a territory. Listen, the gates of a territory can be opened to you. The Bible says it was noise abroad that Jesus was in town. Who did the publicity we do not know. But because the gates of that city were open, the gates of your finances can be closed. The gates of your health can be closed. I like us to pray. Listen. The Bible calls a human being a house. Even demons call human beings house. And every house has gates and doors. Are we together? When a man goes to bed in the night, sound, and wakes up by the next morning with fibro, someone accessed the gate. There was a trespassing. Of the gate are you listening to me now because everybody is a house with a gate I go to bed in the night and while men sleep that's why he's called a thief what do thieves do they attempt to compromise and manipulate their way into a structure and wreak havoc gates That's the ministry of sicknesses like fibroid. I taught you. Because see, a woman in the spirit, I'll be explaining shortly when we start praying. A woman in the spirit is a gate. When you read Revelations, don't turn there. But chapter 12, the Bible says, I saw a wonder in heaven. There was a woman standing, the sun above her and the moon below her. She was pregnant, about to give birth to a man child. All of a sudden, a dragon came and stood waiting that the moment that birthing would happen it would eat the child and the bible says god himself saved the child and the woman was hidden somewhere in the wilderness where god had kept her for three and a half years women are gates when a woman has five blood and all of this the gate that will be able to receive from the realm of the spirit and birth another life has been closed and hannah cried and said give me a man child Give me a man child. When ladies notice, they will know why they are victims of manipulation and all kinds of spiritual things. Barrenness is not just refusal to give birth, it's a mockery on the construction, the way God built a woman. Because the woman is a, the only gate that can bring in another life. And so he stands and manipulates men. People carry strange diseases because their gates. Listen, it's not just for the gates to be opened. Some gates must be shut. Because there are many of us, the gates of our destinies are open to any and everything. Any sickness leaps and enters your body. You don't know when it entered. But you cannot account for the catastrophe happening around your life. We are going to pray tonight. Please, I'd like you to pray. I saw the sword of judgment this morning and I knew God was going to do wonders in this place. You must tell yourself enough is enough. 
you are not just starving yourself for food. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Listen. Let me tell you a mystery. I will tell you why we are praying and fasting now. Why we are denying ourselves food. It's a revelation the Lord showed me. There are many reasons why spirits can live in a human body. Listen. Part of the many reasons why spirits can live in a human body is because of the presence of blood and water. Listen carefully. I'm showing you a mystery. So when a spirit leaves a human body, it goes through dry places looking for that kind of atmosphere and not finding blood and water. It says, let me return back to my house and gather other demons that have also been suffering and brings him in and makes residence in that man so that the end of that man is worse than are we together and every time there is an element of the earth in you especially food and all of that it it has a way of limiting the oppression of the holy spirit in your life as far as trampling the gates of darkness and hell it's God, son. they move to dry regions so every time you make your body for a moment look like that wilderness they become restless are we together <laughs> there is a reason why they hated that habitation it was dry no resources no food and they left to come back to the human body that will be nourished every time and so temporarily if you if you excuse yourself from all of this food and all of these things all of a sudden you find out that there is a lot of discomfort that's why no spirit can live in a body that is battered beyond certain levels they need a particular level of atmosphere we call it death when the body becomes so deteriorated it cannot host any other spirit and it leaves it's a mystery if the gate of a man's destiny is open that man's life can turn around within 24 hours I prayed for a gentleman this evening i think he's here and, and i'm still going to minister to him but that guy touched me so much first class student but until now he's still moving around nothing to do because gates can capture a man's life is that gentleman here did he come where is he are you here if it's not inside it's outside come 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 i want to pray for you that the gate of a man, first class, yet the destiny of a man can be tied. Moving everywhere to look for jobs. That's how many of our fathers are. Because the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. There are mysteries of gates being opened. Come, sir. Come, don't feel embarrassed. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. When I saw him this evening and he was talking to me, I was so, so touched. So touched. This gentleman is a lovely gentleman. First class student. He's paid his price. He's done his best. Now is the time to reap the reward. But a gate refused to open. You are going nowhere. Going nowhere. How many destinies here, inside and outside, have been captured and hijacked by by witchcraft powers and the dangerous part of it is that many of you are given an orientation that it does not exist stop joking with your destiny are we together now my brother like i told you you will stand upon this altar i bring you out publicly because you will stand publicly and we will rejoice with you Will you open up the gates? Open up the door. Will you open up the gates? Open up the door. Open up the door. Lift your voice and say after me. 
in the name of Jesus I command every gatekeeper keeping the gate of my destiny closed keeping the gate of my family closed in the name of Jesus I dethrone your ministry and I command the gate to be open lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray we challenge watchers the watchers of the night the gatekeepers of the destinies of men the gatekeepers of the destinies of men the watchers the watchers Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you, my brother, in the name that is above all names. I'm not telling you what will happen. This prophecy will make it happen. I prophesy to you. Because you have passion for the academia, we open up the gates of institutions for you. In the name that is above all names, I'm praying between now and the next two months, may they call you. In the name of Jesus, I cry unto my Father by the covenant I have of access with Him. I use my secret place. I invoke it upon you. You may not know what I'm doing to you. In the name that is above all names. Listen. He said, is there any man in the house of Saul? He didn't do it for Mephibosheth. God can visit a man for the sake of somebody else. God can visit a man for the sake of somebody else. Hallelujah. I like us to pray. Every gate standing against your family is time to uproot it. Listen. I like you to say in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. Tonight, every ancient gate in my family, every ancient gate maintained by covenant closed by sacrifice hear the word of the Lord tonight be open lift your voice and pray be open be open Efata. be open every gate maintained by witchcraft by covenant by covenant be open Shaba roko to pray the devil and the most Eka leketesh Leketete reketesh Eko pro super di Be open In the name of Jesus Be open In the name of Jesus Be open Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me. The Lord revealed several patterns to me. And I'm going to begin to speak them. And if it affects you, pray like your life depends on it tonight. Hallelujah. I've been having very strange encounters. And one of the patterns of a closed gate is consistent retrogression you are growing older older in age but there is no commensurate achievement are we together a closed gate 
and a close destiny. Number two, what many people call failure at the edge of breakthrough. You see it, but you never handle it. The gate is open for others until you come close. Listen, we are going to pray tonight. You have to insist. Number three, unfruitfulness of any kind. Any kind. Whether barrenness, unfruitfulness in thinking, unfruitfulness in creativity. We are going to challenge it. Number four, all kinds of spiritual molestation. Sleeping with you in the dream, pressing you all devilish kinds of things. The moment you are prepared to rise forward, strangers come to you in the night with all kinds of experiences. Please, I'd like us to pray from the depth of our hearts. Are we together? Men and women, you know what they call bad luck. Honestly, some people have it. Nothing works. Give them money, the money will cost them. Give them any good thing, it will cost them. Give them an opportunity with friends. Something must happen for them to fight. A close door. Another one is that there is always nobody to find in time of need. You are in trouble, nobody is there. Everybody seems to be busy. It's, it's a sign that your heavens are closed. I'd like you to pray and say in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, Koinonia, pray. In the name of Jesus. Every pattern following me. Every pattern. Ancient patterns following me tonight by the blood of Jesus. I command you to stop. Stop, stop, stop. Lift your voice and pray. Every pattern. Every pattern of darkness. Every pattern. Delay. Hardship. Suffering. Pray. Every pattern. prayer in the name of Jesus say it again in the name of Jesus I declare that the mantle for uncommon access just pray even if you don't understand what I'm telling you just, I love you too much to mislead you these are very solid prayers say it again in the name of Jesus I declare that the mantle for uncommon access to people, resources, territories fall upon my life. Lift your voice and pray. Uncommon access. Uncommon access. Uncommon access to people. Uncommon access to resources. Uncommon access to territories, uncommon access to people, uncommon access. Uncommon access.
to people on common access to resources to territories hallelujah when we started koinonia listen when we started koinonia the media people had great plans to begin to package some of our teachings and have people come you know let it be a blessing to others as well as generate finances for the ministry and i went to seek the face of the lord about it if that's what he wanted us to do and the lord said no i will not bless this ministry at this level just from sales of materials there are helpers that will come and bless the ministry he said but this is what you will do upload the audios only the audios no video and i give you access it will enter strange places by my spirit and that's what has happened there is almost no place in this nation that koinonia messages has not entered even the ones that are not very clear because access is given in the spirit people will listen to a message with one hour of singing that is not clear and will still be patient till they finish it it's called access it's not just about marketing there are books you have written but no access there are gifts you have but no access tonight i like you to pray and say every gift in me i say every gift in me every potential in me every ability in me i open up the doors of access in the name of jesus pray 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 access for your writing skills access for your business acumen access for your creativity access for your productivity access for your products We command access, all access to my anointing, my grace given by God, access to the wisdom of God upon my life. I open up more territories, more territories by the power of the Holy Ghost. hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray one more prayer point now listen i think there should be water for those of us who because of the hamatan there should be water feel free i think there's water with the ushers you can move it around and those who may need one just lift your hands and they would give you you can take the reason is because um your saliva has thickened because you have not taken food and water and except you have extra grace you may hurt yourself and at the end of the prayer you will pray well but you have a lot of sore throat so it's all right you can go ahead and take water but for those who think they're okay that's fine please feel free um don't create commotion there it's none of your business what the ushers are doing just focus on our prayer points if the water gets close to you you you, you just take it the goal is not to satisfy test listen please the goal is not to satisfy test the goal is just it's like a lubricant so that you can pray because you need to open your mouth these prayer points that are coming are heavy and have fire and you must open your mouth praise the lord you don't pray warfare prayers um, quietly and loosely and carelessly you pray with aggression hallelujah just two more prayer points and i begin to speak over our lives i tell you fire is burning in this place Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every power in the heavenlies, controlling powers over territories, over destinies, over access points on earth, I speak to you. You lose your power over my life over my family lift your voice and begin to pray 
we challenge spirits in the heavenlies. We challenge spirits in the realm of the spirit, controlling powers. We challenge diviners, necromancers, stargazers, they that manipulate the constellations against our destinies. Tonight, you lose your hold. You lose your hold. Tonight, you lose your hold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. We are still going to pray that prayer. Something is happening here. I tell you, something heavy. Just follow me. You are not praying stupidly. Believe me. I like you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Powers. Thrones. Dominions. Access points. On earth. By prophecy. I contend with you. By prophecy. I cancel your manipulations. Lift your voice and pray. I contend with powers. From the north. To the south, the east, the west. Manipulations of witchcraft. Manipulations through astral projections. Divinations. I challenge you. Challenge you. Hallelujah. One last prayer point. This is heavy. Lift your hands and let's pray. I like you to pray with all your heart. Say in the name of Jesus, altars, foundations, covenants, agreements that are standing as gates against my life, against my family. Tonight, by the blood of Jesus, I challenge you. Pray, lift your voice and pray. Foundations. Oh, yes, 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 pray. Who seen that this man was born blind? Foundations. Thrones. Covenants. By the finished work of Christ, we challenge you. We challenge you. We challenge you. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. my destiny hallelujah hallelujah please lift your hands there will be a mighty deliverance in this place we have a few minutes but I want to pray it's time for that sword to fall in this place I saw it this morning I tell you enough is enough you must be angry and say god enough is enough 
There are so many people connecting with us online. Open up yourself. God can touch anyone everywhere. Hallelujah. We are just going to shout, release my destiny once. That's what the Lord is saying. You will be amazed at what will happen to people now. We are coming to families. Just keep your hands lifted, inside and outside. Lord, I pray, even as you have instructed me, tonight is a night of warfare. I tell you, I already see angels moving, moving, moving. Angels, right now, at the count of three, as you shout, release my destiny, foundations, if it's possible to bring them out, please bring them out. Right now, foundations, in the name of Jesus, one, two, three, right now, release it, release it, powers, thrones, powers, thrones, powers, thrones, bring them out, powers, thrones, shake it, tonight, from the realm of the spirit, we capture back. We capture back. We capture back your destiny. 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 Gates. Hallelujah. Keep your hands lifted. Keep your hands lifted. There are 24 people. 24 people with altars invoking against their destiny. Lord, where are they? Let the fire locate them now. Right now. 24 people by the power of the Holy Ghost. Inside and outside. 24 people. Poroto Shoto Begedegedesh. Your destiny must be released. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lay your hands on your head. The Holy Ghost is speaking to me. Lay your hands on your head. Something will happen to many ladies here. Say in the name of Jesus. I command a restoration of every lost glory in my life. When you say that one more time, the power of God will break out. In the name of Jesus. I command a restoration of every lost glory. Now receive it. Receive it, receive it, receive it like fire is coming on the heads of people. Receive it, receive it, lost glory, lost glory, be restored, lost potentials, be restored, lost intelligence, be restored, be restored, be restored. Hallelujah. Please put down your hands and look at me. Was he praying? Was he praying? Now, a lot of violent things will happen here right now because we're about to command some spirits to leave families. Ushers, be sensitive. I already see it in the spirit. That's why I'm telling you. A lot of heavy violence will happen right now. Say in the name of Jesus. Ancestral powers fighting my life and my family by the blood of Jesus. I command you. Come, 
Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Every cause of hardship. Every cause of failure. Every cause of stagnation. Against my life. And my family. Tonight. Be uprooted. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray, 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 pray. Maga deke te te te. Ay 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 ay. Man de cross so so te te. Erie ke te le ba ba ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me. Koinonia. There are human gatekeepers of men's destinies. Not just spiritual gatekeepers. There are human beings that are fraternized with darkness. I like you to pray. I don't know about you. But one thing I know is any man that stands on the way of my destiny. Whether it's a spirit or a human being, you must clear out of the way. Say in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. Every human agent in partnership with hell to destroy my life and my family I command judgment upon you. Lift your voice. I release judgment. Instruments of judgment. Instruments of judgment. Against every witch, wizard, every devil. Instruments of judgment. Instruments of judgment right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to bring our loved ones into the prayer now. I'd like you to pray. And say every controlling power, every gate manipulating my loved ones. Mention their names. Mention their names. Don't just say manipulate. They have names. Please mention their names. Your children, your father, your mother. Every altar. Every gatekeeper, watch us. Manipulating. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you.
Hallelujah. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. Was he praying? Isaiah 45. I don't know, but the Lord is showing me something strange. I'm seeing animals being slaughtered. This represents somebody's family. Lord, wherever that person is, right now as I speak, whether they know it or not, inside and outside, I'm seeing animals being slaughtered. I release fire. Shaka Batotoba. Right now. Right now. Right now. Fire. Fire. This represents a token of sacrifice. I release fire everywhere in this room and outside. I see animals being slaughtered. I release fire instruments of judgment. Hallelujah. Isaiah 45 verse 1 says, Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus. Mentioning names in prayer is very important. Fake and careless prayer, oh God, bless them. It's a foolish prayer. Who are the them? He says, Thus saith the Lord unto his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden. He said, To subdue nations before him. He says, And I will lose the loins of kings. Then he says, To open before him the two lip gates. And the gates shall not be shut. We are going to pray. You are going to command the gates of your destiny to be open and remain open. Are we ready? In the name of Jesus, I speak prophetically to the gates of my destiny. Remain open. To receive helpers, remain open. To receive prosperity, remain open. To receive favor, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the gates of my destiny. Every time you see evil coming against me, I command you to shut. And every time you see blessings coming towards me, I command you to open. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The tulip gate. Be open unto favor. Be open to receive blessings. Be open to receive men. Be open to receive the treasures of darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Please, I like you if you don't mind. Just take off your shoes and make contact with the earth. I want us to speak. If you can, that's all right. Those under the anointing, you can leave them. Please. The, there are five elements of the supernatural. The supernatural manifests itself. Five elements. Number one is the earth the earth is a universal point of contact number two the mystery of water is a symbol of abundance in the spirit he said and the water which brought forth the fish and the birds abundantly number three is fire that mysterious substance 
that is not scared by anything and yet consumes everything. Number four, light. The mystery of illumination. Number five, the wind. The instrument that conveys sounds and thoughts. We are taking advantage of these elements. We are going to pray. Listen. You don't put gates in the air. Every gate makes contact with the ground. Are we together? Every We prayed it a few days ago. We are still going to pray it again. Every helper of your destiny is marching the same ground you are marching right now. Is that true? Every wicked person against your life is marching the same ground. Covens are not made in the air. They are made on the ground. That's why I told you make contact. The ground can hear. It opened up and swallowed people and closed back. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. On earth. Share the word the Lord. Share the word of the Lord. You are a gift to abundance. You are a gift to territories. You are a gift to supplies. You are a gift to life. I command you open up to my destiny. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The earth has life in it. The earth has abundance. The prophet said, as for the earth, out of it comes bread. bread. The abundance that is in the earth, I make contact. I make contact. Please pray. She pekete toto so bara 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 bara. She pro tu so to bari ekita. I make contact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus was about to wash the feet of his disciples, he asked them to take off their shoes. And he says, if I wash thee not, you do not have a part in me. We are going to pray. And say, I'm standing on bare ground. Territories will never run away from me again. Listen. The land that makes men wealthy is tied to this earth. We are praying and saying, every territory I walk through from today, I command the gates to open up for me. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Don't be quiet. Lord, everywhere my feet treads upon, let the forces of that city, the forces of that territory, come to me in Lagos, Kaduna, Sanfara, Saria, Abuja, Lord, the UK, Brazil, Israel, Ghana. South Africa, every territory, I command the forces by the mystery of the earth. Open up, open up, open up. Hallelujah. Listen, many of you may not understand what is happening to you. Have you seen foreigners? come into a territory and take over businesses, churches, whereas the people there are just standing foolishly. It's a mystery of taking over territories. There was a woman who had bread and had water. There were many people dying in Zarephath, but a man left through Cherith and came into Zarephath and began to enjoy the abundance of that woman. There are so many people, hear me, who are capable of helping you in this city. Others will come from another city and they will help them. But you are so close to them and you may not receive anything. 
we are cancelling that by this prophetic act. Don't you think what we are doing is not in the Bible? It says in Hosea chapter 12, when you read verse 10, he said, I have multiplied visions among you. I've spoken to you through the prophets and I've used similitudes, tokens of prophetic expression. I have used similitudes to communicate my will to you. Hallelujah. Please, you are going to pray. Every territory has a spirit. You are going to command it to open up to your destiny every time you enter any territory. Lift your voice right now and speak. I speak to the soul of Zaria. I speak to the soul of Nigeria. You must open up to Koinonia. Open up to ENI. Open up to my destiny. Open up to my family. In the name of Jesus, as I make contact with the earth, I pray the elements of every territory. Pray, pray. Don't keep quiet. The elements of every territory, I speak to you. I speak to you. I speak to you. Hallelujah. Part of the parameters to measure dominion is your your unrestrained access to territories. One of the indices that you use to measure the extent of dominion that is at work in you is unusual access to territories. Jesus comes and sees people catching fish, trying, trying, and nothing is happening. Then he uses their boat and he tells them, you are laboring. There is a code that brings fish. He said, cast your net now. Do it. And the fish came on their own volition and he caught them. Resources have ears. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please. Resources have ears. Wealth can hear. The spirits of men can hear. We are going to call back everything that was a portion from God to enter your life. But because of these gates have been hindered, there are people here who would have been multi-millionaires by now. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen. Sing it one more time. Everything that was lost shall be restored unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Hallelujah. My Bible says when you catch a thief, he doesn't pay what he stole. He pays tenfold. Because before he stole it, you would have been moving forward. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I demand a restoration for every realm I would have been in right now. I demand a restoration. Pray. I demand a restoration. I demand a restoration. I demand a restoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've shared this testimony here. Let me share it again to bless us. A few years ago, there was a woman who had been barren for eight years. How many years? Eight years. And um, that barrenness became very, very serious. And then we prayed for her. And something remarkable happened. She never came here directly. When she was prayed for, she, she was pregnant and she had triplets. Say restoration. That one is no longer delivery. That's restoration. Are we together? Restoration. God has a way of compressing time and taking you. You see, let me tell you something. Let me explain it. Come, Victor. If we are walking at the same pace in life, are we together? 
and he stops you know i'm moving this is called delay this is called stagnation now victor keep coming you see i'm still ahead because when that limitation is taken away what happens is called progress not restoration restoration is come stand here victor i am here and victor is here and by an ability of the spirit he is carried so that you come and match up so that in your life we will not see the empty space again that's what you are going to pray for and say lord take me by the wings of the spirit to the realm that you have desired for me to be pray 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 financially academically maritally rest rest believe what you are saying rest Restore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen. If there is anyone in your life or your family who has been barren, now is the time to pray. Isaiah 66. Let me show you a mystery that God showed me. Isaiah 66 verse 9. While we are praying, Every lady here, when we begin to pray, you are going to lay your hands on your foot. You are going to pray and say, No barrenness, you must cast into hell. If there are your loved ones with those patterns, use yourself as a point of contact and send fire on the gates of hell tonight. He says, And I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. If Mary was barren, where would Jesus come from? Are we together? If the mother of Abraham was barren, where would he come from? Everyone read. One, two, read. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth? It's a question. Say it the Lord. Number two. Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb? God is saying I have no business with that nonsense that is going around. I have count me out. God is saying I, if you have been confused, as to whether it's God or not, I'm telling you tonight, it is the devil from the pit of hell. Are we together? I'd like you to say in the name of Jesus. Now, obviously the brothers don't have a womb, but you have a brain. Your brain functions exactly like the womb. It can be barren and not think anything or think nonsense. No creativity. What the womb is to the lady is what your brain, as a gentleman, it takes creativity to come into the realm of responsibility are we together so don't say i don't have a womb don't you think there is a brain you must activate by fire tonight are we together say in the name of jesus every trace of barrenness in my life my mind and my family i arrest you tonight lift your voice and begin to pray Sisters, pray. No barrenness. No barrenness. No barrenness. No barrenness. No barrenness. Pray. Let hands on your womb and prophesy every spell, every covenant. Of barrenness, I open that gate. I open that gate in my life. I open that gate. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady coughing out something. I'm seeing someone coughing out something. It's a spiritual thing. That's what the Lord is showing me. That demonic thing that is resident inside you must leave you that's what i'm seeing in a vision i'm seeing a lady coughing out something we are organized people but tonight please let's just let god do what he's doing some destinies must open up we are going to pray brothers please pray sisters 
you will pray too but this prayer point is for brothers who are tired of people who are broke and failing and cannot move forward brothers are you ready to pray take what i'm saying seriously listen the bible says any man that cannot cater for his family is not only an unbeliever is worse than an infidel that means within every man is capacity to bear ideas and produce are we together there are two things we are going to challenge every brother please pray if i see you standing i'll hold you and pray with you every brother pray you are going to challenge the spirit of laziness number two you are going to challenge barrenness in creativity say in the name of jesus every spirit of laziness every barrenness of ideas over my mind i challenge you by the blood of jesus lift your voice and begin to pray lord i challenge the gates and the doors. i release creative ideas innovations witty inventions ideas that bring wealth ideas that bring me before the great Bro brothers bro lord i'm tired of struggling change my life change my situation Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says, "For as he thinketh in his heart." so is he many of us listen we have exposed ourselves to things that are destroying our lives right now pornography look up please pornography movies that carry strange and wicked spirits you thought you were watching entertainment but you were opening your gate willingly to nonsense and right now you can't see a lady pass your mind is thinking all kinds of things are we together some of us browsing things in the internet you started browsing all kinds of mantras and astrological things in an attempt to find out history you have exposed yourself zodiac signs you've opened up yourself to palm reading hexa spells projections and all kinds of demonic things downloaded books books of freemasonry books of astral manipulations and read it because you are inquisitive and chanted those things don't say it does not matter christ has paid the price but warfare enforces prophecy you are going to pray it's time to drive some strangers out of your destiny are you ready to pray now please i want you to be sincere with yourself under god don't deceive yourself tonight hallelujah most of our children now have been indoctrinated with rubbish look at a small child like these are little ones ask him what gift should i buy he will tell you a gun he won't say rubber car you buy rubber car he knows that rubber car is nonsense he wants a gun he, he has opened the gate of his spirit to associate greatness with violence and bloodshed some of us are like that that's the reason why you have given access to spirits strange controlling powers now listen 
we are going to challenge addictions there are addictions killing men because the gate of your heart is open for everything i know people that love god with all their heart but women women are we together brothers women there are ladies men you can come for koinonia on friday and by saturday you can even live and travel to lagos risk your life just to go and meet a man i'm not condemning you don't get me wrong i'm saying it's something we must break i know people pastors men of god i prayed for people you can finish preaching on the altar and run back and there are addictions anything god gives you he gives you authority over it whatever has authority over you even if it came from god it has been hijacked and manipulated we're going to pray addiction has made our prayer lives go down some of you your addiction is moving you can watch movie for two days stretch you are just laughing by yourself and laughing away your destiny forever these things must be brought under control in the name of jesus pray rise up please we are praying except if you're under the anointing i know you are tired but some of you you've taken almost two bottles of water stand up please we are praying hallelujah i know you are tired but you won't die right please we have just a few minutes it's, i think it's a very fair if you're a businessman and you will do deal and be tired for one day and enjoy for the rest of your life i think you're a wise businessman so you don't just sluggishly sit down remember the bible says the moment the word comes satan himself comes to steal it praise the lord we are going to pray say in the name of jesus every habit every addiction in my life mocking my christian experience and giving access to demons tonight be broken lift your voice and begin to pray you know what it is call it by name i challenge you call it by name Immortality. you come under the foot of the cross the price for my liberty has been paid in full i enforce the verdict of the cross i enforce the verdict of the cross drunkenness smoking one lifestyle i challenge you tonight please pray, pray. every addiction hallelujah listen i know that i just said something many of us are not very comfortable with because that i've said addiction and the rest many of us are feeling uncomfortable but you know i'm not lying if we cannot flog out these issues within these seven days we are liars and hypocrites are we together now at least I'm, i know that i counsel many of us and god is helping us there's no condemnation at all prophecy is not doing any fresh fight it's enforcing the verdict of the cross please there are it's better to deal with some things now before you rise to a level where the world is celebrating you this is what we see crashing down people a man has an addiction for a fellow man and he's not dealing with it he's just laughing you can be praying for the sick and casting out devils listen they came and said master even the demons are subject to us through thy name and he said do not rejoice just because demons are subject to you he said in that day we shall say we casted out this and that and that in your name please use the next two to three minutes flog it out with destiny be sincere with yourself the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses koinonia he says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us now that the gates have been opened you don't want something to impede your speed i like you to pray and say i confront this addiction by the blood i confront you i'm tired 
of you mocking God in my life. Pray. In the name of Jesus, I challenge you. I challenge you. In the name of Jesus, I challenge you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, I want to challenge us here. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to challenge us. There is nowhere in the Bible where ungodliness profits anybody. Let's be sincere with God, the one we serve. Are we together? I'm not condemning us. God does not condemn, but He does not condone too. There is nowhere you will mix righteousness and ungodliness and pretend and say it does not matter. The Bible says, Godliness, hear me is profitable unto all things he said having the reward in this life in this life it rewards you in this life and hereafter hallelujah listen in this period of fasting and prayer i challenge you there are some phone numbers you should delete from your phone forever you know what i'm saying you cannot want to walk with god and put one leg in and one leg out don't play games with your destiny some of us i understand from our backgrounds we have had ourselves you know mingled with all kinds of things now that you are born again the truth is your association may not be born again they still think you are like them are we together whereas you would have been no big deal for you to just go now that weekend is coming sleep around do a lot of things and the person is now calling you how far weekend is coming don't just say i don't do it that's not enough excuse you've got to let the person know that you are serious with god and your destiny don't just say i can't do it what you are telling the person is you are not rich like before again so it's, it's no longer negotiable you have to be very serious about it the arm of the lord is not too short that he cannot save iniquity draws men i will say it the way it is amen so God is going to help us and we are going to pray but don't just pray alone Gideon said why have we not seen these miracles that our fathers told us he told him go and destroy there are altars there are, there are physical expressions there are similitudes that sponsor the entrance of hell hallelujah you are not married to a brother you are happily staying in the same room with him Say, no no nothing is happening for now for now until something happens that backfires praise the lord there are many things we do you call your mother to give you school fees call your father give you school fees call one garden give you school fees you join everything you call it smartness you will never prosper that way that's not how god increases people please i like us to pray and say lord i receive grace to be godly Please, listen, listen, look at me. Some of you may be angry with what I'm telling you tonight, but you will love me and thank me tomorrow. Ungodliness will cheat you. The cost is too much. i like us to pray and say, Lord, grace for genuine godliness. Lift up your voice and pray. Grace for genuine, genuine godliness. Grace for genuine godliness. Grace for genuine godliness. The grace of God has appeared unto all, teaching us to say no. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Genuine godliness. Genuine godliness. Hallelujah. I'm rounding up. I just felt it in my spirit to communicate this because I believe with my heart that we we'll begin to see mighty things happen. We have fasted, we have prayed. Let's not waste our fasting. The Bible says, Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? It is a he that speaks in tongues, it's a he that has clean hands 
and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully what's the reward he said he shall receive a blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of salvation who shall ascend to the hill of the lord a clean hand and a pure heart Create in me a clean heart and purify me, purify me. Create in me a clean heart so I may worship you. Sing one more time. Create. Hallelujah. I know our time is gone, but please spare me five minutes. I want to make a serious altar call right now. Hallelujah. Now, please keep standing. We are, we are almost gone. There are people inside and outside who have been praying. We have labored in the spirit. But there are people who are saying, man of God, I was invited during this fasting and I want to make up my mind to live for Jesus. Two altar calls in one. Number one, you have never given your heart to Jesus Christ. You've been strolling around the church, doing a lot of Christian activities, but your heart is not with God. Tonight is the time to make up your mind. Number two, please no distraction, don't distract them. Number two, there are those who are backsliding seriously. You were once serious with God, but for some reason, your life just scattered and went haywire. I believe there are so many people, especially outside. Friends invited you, and you are hearing the word of the Lord, and the Spirit of God is telling you, you are the one this man of God is talking about. I'm going to count one to ten. Someone's knocking at your door. Sing that song. Can you hear him calling? One, make your way to the front. Appreciate them as they come. Appreciate them. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God bless you. Keep coming. Please clear the way for them outside. Leave your seat and come. There are many people Jesus is calling tonight. Jesus, Jesus, Keep clapping, Koinonia. For God so loved the world, the Bible says, that He gave His one and only begotten Son. Please shame the devil in your life. We that work tonight. Jesus, at the door. Keep coming. Keep coming. There are people say, man of God, I'm struggling with all kinds of things. Join them. Join them and come. The Lord is helping you tonight. Join them wherever you are. Please, if you are not part of those coming, clear the way for them. Join them. Join them. I want to break free from certain things that are making me unserious. Find your way. Join them with your heart open. And when you come out here, please talk to the Lord. Don't look at me. Be praying while the rest join you. Sing. Jesus, Jesus. Keep joining them. God bless you. He's at the door. Jesus is at the door tonight and he's knocking seriously. Jesus, Jesus, that door, your heart must be open tonight. He's at the door. God bless you as you come. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me at least two ladies outside. You came as a group of five ladies and God is speaking to two of you to come. But you are shy and you are ashamed. Nobody is closing his eyes for this altar call. You don't close your eyes when they are giving you a gift. You open it and say thank you. Make your way to the front. Join them. Please join them quickly. Those in front, can you shift a little so that we can have space? There are so many people. Koinani, are you grateful to God for this harvest? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to lead you to pray a serious prayer of salvation. 
hallelujah please look at me thank you brothers and sisters for coming out if you still want to join them make your way it's not too late join them if the holy spirit is saying stand up from that seat it means he's really talking to you make your way the door that must be open tonight the bible says and all doors were open all not some hallelujah praise the lord drunkards benelin Cody, join them jesus is calling you tonight wild party wild lifestyle join them you are not sure you are saved join them you must not just receive a salvation tonight you must receive assurance of salvation listen let me tell you the truth there is a real place called heaven some people left this morning and went there there is a real place called hell no matter how science explains it away there is a real place called hell and we cannot be so afraid of teaching the truth that we ignore that fact there is a place called hell the bible says whosoever's name was not found in the book of life he was cast into the lake of fire it was not a, it was not a parable i'm laughing over the issue right now because when you die there is no second chance i still believe there are some people who should join them outside there is a real place called hell join them you know that if jesus christ comes today you are not going to heaven make your way to the front please there are people outside don't be ashamed rise up and join them so that i can pray with you hallelujah praise the lord those of you here i thank you so much for making this great decision you have fasted you have prayed every one of us was at one time like this praise the lord we are not ashamed of it there's nothing to be ashamed of i want you to lift your right hand to heaven you are not reciting a poem from the depth of your heart some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears you are saying it's over with hell and satan say after me lord jesus say it from the depth of your heart lord jesus i come to you this night just as i am you know that song you know that hymn just as i am without one plea while still praying sing the song just as I am. I just feel we should sing that song. finish praying for them who we'll sing that song there is a fountain filled with blood that flows from Emmanuel's vein say after me Jesus forgive me cleanse me from all unrighteousness I receive your gift of eternal life into my heart tonight I say bye bye to my past in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted and i pray for you lord jesus no man can draw people like this except you i thank you for this that you have done you have glorified your son we thank you for this harvest my god i pray that none of these people will be snatched back some of them are crying because they are expressing their pain for the life that they have lived i declare that your sins are forgiven in the name of jesus every guilt that the accuser of the brethren is bringing upon you i see three ladies here you don't need to lift your hands but there's been some i'm sorry to say it, but some intense abortions that have happened repeatedly and there's guilt upon you i want you to know that when jesus forgives he throws it completely forever he gives you a brand new lifestyle tonight in the name of jesus christ i pray for you your salvation is secured in christ in the name of jesus the power of sin of hell every habit that is not of god is broken from your life hallelujah i not only pray for you i command the gates of your destiny to be closed from bad and wicked people in the name of jesus may the god that i serve 
separate you from the company of destiny killers the company of wicked and unreasonable people you will see them no more forever in the name of jesus christ hallelujah give jesus a clap of praise hallelujah now um there are so many people please just two instructions for you we want your details all of you hallelujah there's a gentleman sorry the light just went up but you wave his hands and you see him and there's a lady at the other side i'd like you to just follow them they'll have your details we'll send you messages and i want to encourage you please we encourage hold on please. we encourage everyone who gets born again to be part of our prayer department for at least one month because it will help you you'll be filled with the holy ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues fluent tongues and you begin to grow in the things of the spirit getting born again and going back to settle in a life that is not of god will draw you back hallelujah so i want to encourage you they'll have your details and they will encourage you i'll personally get to you and will follow you up the lord bless you in the name of jesus frustration pain sickness barrenness disease recession lack poverty failure despair darkness shall cover the earth gross darkness the people but the glory of the lord shall arise upon thee so cheer up rejoice your change has come god sent forth his word and that word healed them and delivered them from all their destruction join, join apostle joshua son of eternity network international as he takes you on, on a journey into, into god's healing and restoring world it's intimacy it's partnership it's fellowship this is koinonia Make sure you are praying. Hold hands with someone. Make sure you are praying. 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 Make sure you Zatos ke parus kala brandis kala bria shada balala bolos. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's pray one more prayer point. I like you to ask the Lord to meet every single one of your needs tonight. It's a year of signs and wonders. Lift your voice. Say, Father, every single petition, every single need. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that they are turned to testimonies tonight. Shabado katu sada brati kere balada bush. Rekete paroda sada balada balakata frada skele barya kata. Shekoto skabarunda skabarya kata frada balada bush. We receive by faith. We receive by faith. We receive by faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is a God that doeth wonders and he will do mighty things in our midst tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you prophesy to two or three people that God is about to do mighty things in your life? minute from your heart god is about to do mighty things in your life don't be surprised when you see your life changing don't be surprised when you see doors opening don't be surprised when you encounter new anointings god bless you please be seated let's put our hands together for jesus this is our first miracle service for 2018 hallelujah 
We're going to put our hands together again. Let the devils know we're back again. Back again. Back again. Miracles back again. Breakthroughs back again. Signs and wonders back again in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. I'm excited in my spirit because I know that God will change someone's life. It never tires me to hear the testimonies of the hand of God over the lives of people. Sometimes it's just like day and night. And God did it. And God wiped my tears. And God took away cancer. And God took away this infirmity. And God forced a wicked man to respond to me. And God did this and that. The God that doeth wonders. A wonder is a miracle with a message in it. You see that? Yes. When your miracle does not have a message, it's not a wonder. There must be a message in it. It's a statement. Like Julius Berger built a house and writes there, B. When you see it, you are not confused. You see the level of the architecture. Then they tell you they are the one. So God does certain things in your life and puts his signature and says, I am the God that doeth wonders. That's what will happen to you tonight. In the name of Jesus. There's a lot to do tonight. I will just admonish us very quickly. I'm not really preaching. I just want to communicate a few things that the Lord put in my spirit. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. The more I seek to understand God, the more I align to understand His ways. I'm amazed at the things that I discover about God alongside the reasons why we seldom see magnificent dimensions of His power and His grace. And I am humbled and forced to admit that God is a good God. And there is something really wrong with our understanding of Him. Hallelujah. And this is one of the keys that I want to share with us. There's a separate series coming that will deal with this but then the Lord just has one question for us tonight written in our requests written upon the tablets of our hearts are several needs and miracles that we trust the Lord to bring some of us healing miracles some of us are here to encounter higher levels of grace some of us are trusting God for influence prosperity access to revelation breakthroughs all kinds of things and there's a very simple question can god trust you this is my admonishment tonight can god trust you it looks like a very simple statement very basic but this is the reason why many people may never be granted access to the deep things of God. Can God trust you? Matthew 25. Let's read from verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. To every man according to his ability and straightway he took his journey and he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made other five talents and likewise he that had received two he also gained other two but he that received one went and dug in the earth and hid the Lord's money after a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee a ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Same thing happened with the second person. 
and then let's go to 24 then he that had received the one talent came and said lord i know thee that thou art a hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not spread and i was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth lo there thou hast what is thine his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful, or other versions say, unfaithful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sweat not, and gather where I have not sown or spread. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with interest. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him that had ten talents. The last verse. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he that have abundance, and he shall have abundance, but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he had. There is so much, I believe with all my heart, that in this season the Lord wants to reveal and commit to his body please listen the lord wants to commit new and greater dimensions of the anointing the lord wants to commit higher and superior levels of influence the lord wants to commit access the lord wants to commit prosperity like never before but there is one question can god trust me can god trust you it's always been a question of trust not his ability trust can god trust you with the anointing that you seek can god trust you with the level of increase and access can god trust you with classified spiritual information can you be a faithful steward of the mysteries of the kingdom are we together can god trust you with the children you are trusting that he gives you can God trust you with the ministry that you desire that he gives you? Can God trust you with the increase? You know, many times we don't think about these things. All we want is God give me. Lord, you have to answer me. Wipe my tears. Change my story. You see a lot of people saying, Lord, give me money. Give me prosperity. And I can imagine the Lord looking from heaven. Can I trust you? Are we together? God never trusts people he has not tested. God does not trust you by faith. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Notice that in this parable, the Bible says, when you read from verse 14, it says that there was a man. That man was obviously a wealthy man. And the man had assets, had possessions, etc. And then the Bible says that he had three servants, three workers notice now the bible does not give us the details of how he recruited them but it was very clear from the context of this scripture that he had been watching them is that true and the bible says that on the strength of his his observation he gave on to one five talents he gave on to one two talents he gave on to one one talent Notice how correct he was by the results that were produced. He had been watching them. There was a day he gave them certain things and he observed their stewardship. And he now gave one five talents, two talents, and did not supervise them. He left. And then the Bible says, after a long time, he came back to find out which of them still had a sense of stewardship. And the Bible says two out of the three, one had multiplied and kept good stewardship of what he was given. Same thing with the other. And there was an angry, greedy, jealous, and unserious one who really deserved one. In fact, deserved none. True? He was waiting in anger for the master to come. Observe many things wrong with this guy. He was irresponsible. He was not willing to learn because the other two were his colleagues. He would have easily met them and said, what did you do with the five and two? He had access to people who had results. Are we together? So you wouldn't say that the mentor was not there, but there were people. 
all of them were trained by the same person meaning he was not a listener there was something about his arrogance that was becoming glaring i'm sure he was offended for being committed one you see that and then when the master came he said mr five talent what have you done he said this is what i've done i have multiplied your estate i've multiplied your assets the other person with the two the same thing and then he said how about you say i've been waiting for you now you will hear from me i know you are a hard man i know it from the lecture i know it from the way you don't like me i know it from the way you shut me down when i try to interrupt you as you talk and so i thought that it would be a waste of time to pay attention to you anyway just to let you know i didn't lose anything here's what you gave me you sow seeds not talents you see that and he dug it in the earth and gave the man and the man said you are a wicked an unprofitable servant he said at least if you could not produce the result yourself why don't you give those who can produce it are you seeing you did not your problem was not your inability to produce result it was your pride you would have handed it to someone who could produce the result and i would have credited it that you were a humble person though ignorant you were both ignorant and arrogant are we together trust there are so many people listen you know we live in a society where we admire results and results are wonderful but if you've been in this house for a long time you know that god has taught us to observe how results come not just to celebrate the appearance of results there are men of god who want the anointing there are so many people who want i think one of the major problems of people now is this money thing prosperity finances money oh god arise oh god give money oh god wipe our tears and god says look if there is nothing wrong with my abundance you have a problem with your country not me you see that and then god is asking a question to everyone listening can i trust you can i trust you to be a faithful steward with my people there are men of god who want crowds we celebrate crowds we want god to can i trust you to burden yourself and meet them at the point of their needs i want expansion in ministry can i trust you to sustain capacity enough to deliver at all times lord connect me to great people can i trust you with access to their information listen this is a very powerful message very powerful can god trust you with money can god trust you with men can god trust you with influence can god trust you with the anointing these are the priceless commodities that make for great men can god trust you god has tested people with the anointing and they made a mess a mess of it god trusted people with money they made a mess of it god trusted people with information they made a mess of it there are many destinies today some of our loved ones sadly who would never be where they were if they knew how to be trusted with information god brought them to men and women of influence and they abused the privilege of access and did not know how to keep information other people anointings god brought them the anointing and they did not find out how the anointing remains they were more passionate about let me tell you something success just like the anointing and any other thing the easiest part of it is the arrival the maintenance of anything given by god is harder than the reception are we together the hardest part of the easiest part of prosperity is the arrival of resources maintaining it takes a lot of discipline maintaining the anointing the glory of god upon your life maintaining influence maintaining relationships all of these priceless things the simple question God is asking us tonight is can I trust you can I trust you with the answers to your requests can I trust you Lord I want admission
can I trust your heart when you get admission? Lord, I want a job. The brother came and shared about his job. And when he mentioned the amount, people were clapping. Can God trust you? I must be a millionaire. That's not the issue. Can God trust you? God gave you 30,000. You struggled for one month to pay your tithe. And God says, you see this? I love you too much to increase you. So that it does not destroy you. Are we together? I shared it, I think it was last week. That... It was, it was a statement I heard from a man of God and the Lord reminded me again in my place of retreat that there are certain people who cannot be trusted with deep spiritual things because they have not built capacity to manage the, the contentions in the spirit that come along with that level. There are levels of prosperity that when God gives you the kinds of attack that comes, your prayer life, your word life, and your spiritual stability cannot accommodate that level of lifting. So God's withdrawal of it is an act of His love for you. Are we together? The Bible says an heir, as long as he's a child, he said, differeth not from a slave. There is no difference, but he's under tutors and governors who mentor him until the time appointed for him to come into the fullness of sonship. So the question is, I watch people, and truly speaking, sometimes I, I, can, feel, I can feel the burden of God's frustration, if I use that word, while I minister to people. Because I know that their desires will not be answered. It's a very difficult thing as a man of God to pray for someone. You already know the prayer will not be answered. And yet you cannot tell the person because of this key. That the individuals have not sustained the ability to be trusted with that level of grace. There are men of God who desire superior levels of the anointing. Almost every week you see me leave this place maybe past 12. I've had a week long of activities just returning um, to Mzari and right here have another conference you know and all of that can you be that much of a servant when God gives you the anointing or will you now begin to merchandise the anointing and say you know that I'm busy and all of that those who have money join this queue those who are still trusting God join the other one can God trust you is God speaking to anyone Man of God, I want to be able to see in the spirit and hear in the spirit and then do what with the information? That's my question. What happens when God grants you access to the deep secrets of people? Do you have the psychological stability to sit under such classified information and be quiet? I want to become a great man of God. What do you do as you counsel people? As they open up their life, deep secrets that sometimes even as couples they do not know, even as family members, informations that only the individual and God and you being the next, do you have the fortitude to be silent in the midst of plenty? Are we together? Let's be honest with ourselves and not turn God into a fool. This trust is one of the greatest keys to seeing the outstretched arm of God. There are people who cannot be trusted with certain levels of revelation. Can you be trusted with such depth of the prophetic and be in a meeting and you are seeing everything and then they give you a mic and then you can just come up and pray for one minute and regardless of what you are seeing, you drop the mic back and sit down. There is always that itch. I, I want to sit down, but look, uh, I, Kai, I'm seeing something. Now, we will now add that carelessness to the revelation and make it look like it's the Holy Spirit that is controlling all. The only thing He's sponsoring is the revelation. It is your flesh that is adding the lack of stability. But because you are flowing in the Spirit, supposedly, everybody thinks it's the Holy Spirit that is responsible for all of the outcome. Can you be trusted? We need the anointing, but can you be trusted? Lord, I want my own house. I'm tired of rent. Can you be trusted with maintaining it as God's house? 
Lord, I want to be a kingdom financier. And then God says, you have 110,000, empty it. And he said, cast that voice. It can't be God. Abba. Something that I've said for how many months? And God says, and you, you are mentioning 100 million with no respect. You want to die? It's amazing how we do not think about the cost dimensions of the things we desire from God. We want it. Do you know why we want it? Because we hope that by acquiring things, it will change people's perceptions about us. So you are wearing a nice suit. We are wearing a nice this. So it will make someone look at you and respect you. No. Things were never supposed to be the basis of our confidence. Let him that glory and glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, not the value in his bank account, not the hair, not the shoe, not the clothes. My simple question before we begin to pray is, can God trust you? If you cannot answer this question tonight, then you deserve to go on a retreat. Hallelujah. There are so many families in need of children. The man is praying that God will give him a child. And you watch the way he's managing his wife. You watch the way he's managing the car. That's how you are going to manage a baby sent from heaven. And God says, no way. Can I trust you? You saw somebody's child and slapped the child as if just because... The Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. It should not surprise you when a child is foolish. And you beat someone's child as if you are beating your age mate. And say, God, I'm waiting for my own. God says, no way. This is not how things come from heaven. You must be proven. Are we together? You are staying in another man's rented apartment. The water is leaking. You don't care. Because you say, it's not my apartment. Is that true? Everything is spoiling and you don't care. I won't waste my money. And then the Lord is watching you. And you are there prophesying and making a fool of yourself. And saying, one day I will have my own. And I will have tenants. Do you not know you are programming a harvest? And God says, for the sake of my mercy, I will keep you at this level. Until you qualify by being trustworthy. I have watched specific people enter certain dimensions they were not praying for simply because of trust. I repeat myself, brothers and sisters, can God trust you with the anointing? He got you filled with the Holy Spirit. You are wasting the ministry of the Holy Spirit already and you want more power. You are not utilizing the person of the Holy Spirit. So what do you need the anointing for? Can you keep and maintain the anointing? Let me tell you, this anointing, you've heard me say, the anointing is like a knife. There is a way you hold it. It can kill you, the holder of it. Are we together? Have you seen people use a knife and injure themselves by mistake? It wasn't the knife's fault. It was something about the way you held it. We desire the anointing. And God wants to commit it. But the question is, can we be trusted? Can you be sleeping and God wakes you and says, intercede for A, B, C for the next three hours. And your own prayer request is not there. Can you carry out the anointing and have several challenges yourself? And God does not even allow you to pray for them. You are there praying for others. Do you have the fortitude to survive that? Hallelujah. We need the anointing in our lives. But can God trust us? How about influence? There are some of us who have lost precious people in our lives. Not physical death. We've lost certain levels of influence. Because we could not manage it. The Bible says, listen carefully. It says that Joseph... When Joseph was granted access to become the prime minister, right? Paraphrasing that he was wise in his dealings. He understood that he was not an Egyptian. And he made sure he kept attracting the favor of Pharaoh. To the point that Pharaoh gave gifts and said, go and give your father. Ask them to come. Hallelujah. There are many people who pray for favor 
the man of God prophesies favor to your life. And then, um, let me have someone come. This brother is praying for favor. Are we together now? Please come, Pastor Femi. And he's praying, Lord, give me access to Pastor Femi. Please stand here. And this is this guy's prayer. And he's just praying. Then a man of God, standing, representing the presence and the power of God, prophesies, may you find favor. And the Holy Spirit plays his own role by bringing you to a place of influence. See that? And now, this man is discussing with his fellows. And just because you have access through favor to listen to their conversations, you do not have the ability to keep yourself psychologically sound. You go around and say, these men are discussing one billion, five billion, and somebody says, which one? Let me go and beg him. Let me tell you what the foolish beggar would do. He says, sir, don't be offended. You see that man? He was discussing something that was attractive. Yeah, me, my own is just rent of 120. And he said, who told you? And he points out. He will give him the 120 and drive you. That beggar has replaced your position because of foolishness. The Holy Spirit answered your prayer. Lack of wisdom took you back to Egypt. Are we together now? There are people who sit among great people. Come. As an act of favor. And they hear people talking. Discussing politics. God is blessing you. Instead of you to behave yourself wisely. I'm showing you how not trustworthy many people are you listen to their conversations and later on you now run your mouth and say sorry sir i don't know who you are but sorry this thing you are saying the news i don't know which newspaper you follow but the one ah no now was it not efcc that did this thing and you are talking even hitting the person at the chest and then later they will tell you that person is the manager of what your father is looking for a job he's looking for a contract there and the person will say who brought this small boy into this place they say drive him and let him never come again prayer answered foolishness reverses us back i really really want god to bless us are we together i won't lie to you if you are not trustworthy there are certain things that will be far from you anointing prosperity relationships influence i have seen men of god who go to the churches of other people and just because they have the anointing they do not have that ability to maintain trust you just move around and start speaking to everyone and say stand up you don't know which man of god is which stand up and say, stand up what am i seeing you are this uh, are you this and that and then you find out that this is an overseer somewhere probably they were considering inviting you and your foolishness locks a door that would have granted you access to meet your destiny helpers you must know how to behave yourself wisely signs and wonders is not just a charm that happens to people anyhow there is a protocol there is a system hallelujah praise the lord can you be trusted with relationships can you be trusted with valuable relationships advantageous connections can god bring people of influence in your life and then you don't become a parasite and a nuisance to them are we together now yes i've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy and blessed people god is my witness I never, if we are in a restaurant with them, I pay for it, both myself and them. I will fight to make sure that I don't allow that. Let me tell you what many of us will do. We finish and say, Sahaba, you that uh, you have this thing, me that so your boys are struggling. And the man looks at you and says, This guy is not an advantage to me. Go. You see, demons don't just walk anyhow. They observe your weakness and build a fortification around it. If your weakness is lack of wisdom, that becomes their access point. You can be delivered, you can fall and rise. Our hearts are full of faith, but many believers, our heads are empty. There's no strategy, there is no wisdom. So we are full of faith, but we never rise strategically. Or we cannot maintain our lifting. 
can God trust you with relationships? Are we together? Can God trust you with influence? Influence. The ability to compel loyalty from people is a dangerous thing to be influential. You know, there's a statement on easy lies the head that wears the crown. Listen very carefully. It's a miracle service. The miracle has already happened. Are we together? This that I'm giving you, maybe second to salvation, is one of the greatest miracles that is happening in this place this night. Then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture. The system of God is something that we must study. Otherwise, we will keep mocking and flattering ourselves with one testimony today, never to have another one tomorrow. And you see, when your life is void of predictable results, you will be angry, you will be resentful, you will begin to hate people. You will look exactly like the man with one talent. Can God trust you with influence? You have access to people. You can say, Pastor Femi, go and remove this tie and bring it. And he says, yes, sir. Take. Gentlemen, remove this your watch and give me. God said it and he believes in the word of God upon you. Can you have the discipline to be shown his bank account and see one million and keep quiet? Not to say, sir, now that I've, I've encouraged you, please encourage me too. And the man said, I don't have anything. He said, it's not true. You have 578,089 kobo. And best say, it's true. Now, that was not the Holy Ghost. The gift was from God. The use was from a mindset that has not been well constructed by God. Are we together? He gave unto them five, two, one, according to their abilities. Then he collected from one that had one. I thought he would keep it to himself. The goal was never to keep it to himself. He gave the guy that now had 10 to have 11. Sometimes depletion in your life is not a message from Satan. Depletion in your life is a message from God to you that your stewardship is under attack. Are we together? When resources begin to deplete mysteriously, when relationships begin to deplete mysteriously, when influence begins to deplete mysteriously. It's not just a call to go and pray and bind. It's the time to pray inquiry prayers. Lord, what is going on? Why is it that I could call this woman yesterday and she would pick, but now I am calling her and she's saying, sorry, I'm in a meeting. Why am I? I mean, the top five people who were channels of favor in my life are now too busy for me. It's a message. It's not just something, no, there must be a spirit. Oh, oh God, I write it, prayer point number one, prayer point number two. No, let's be intelligent in our approach. It is a message from God to you that you are, something is wrong with your stewardship. All of a sudden you go for a meeting and the power, the grace and the glory of God does not flow. You find out that there is a struggle with revelation. It happens in one meeting. You give an excuse that the people didn't fast. It happens in another meeting. You give an excuse that the sound was not very nice. After five meetings, go for a retreat quickly. Depletion is proof that your stewardship is being questioned from the realm of the spirit. Because the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter. Are we together? I'm teaching you the systems of the kingdom. When you see things that used to work in your life, and all of a sudden, in a succession, not just one area of your life, in a succession, doors begin to close. Could it be that you are becoming the man with one talent? This is the miracle that some of us need right now. I know some of us came believing that, look, it, it can be. I was a millionaire 2004 and then now I'm going down and right now I don't even have up to 100,000 in my account. There must be a spirit. I know that apostle is going to speak one word. When I fall under the anointing and rise, that will be over. Listen, I don't want you to be frustrated. It could be that that withdrawal is God's mercy to you. 
he pegged you at a level he rated you and saw the highest level where your stewardship was at his best and kept you there notice that there are certain blessings that come to us no matter how much it reduces to reach a threshold and remains there there are some people let me use finances as an instance they never cross 200,000 give them 5 million something will happen but when it's now within the range of 200,000 it will remain in the account it is the level you have been pegged in the spirit as the level that will allow you become most faithful over God's resources Are we together? Lord, I want to marry a man of God. God says, can I trust you with the assignment I have given him? Not the influence he has. The assignment. Can you stand the persecution? Everybody calling you a witch, stupid woman. She's eating church money to buy shoe and still keep quiet and say, Lord, bless these members. Or will you be the reason members will leave the man of God's church and say, I love this man, but his wife is a stranger. Can you sit in the midst of great power and still go down on your knees before God? Or you will be conscious, ah, let me not kneel down before all these small children. Let them not think I'm... <clears throat> David danced before God. Danced before God. And the daughter of Saul, his wife, said, Abba, O oh king, have you forgotten you are royalty? Don't, uh, you are falling your hand. David said, I'm dancing before the God who collected the kingdom from your father and gave to me. While that discussion was going, God was listening. And she died not having a child. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen. listen i believe that one of the signs that God wants to produce in this ministry is a combination of strange levels of the anointing and strange levels of prosperity these two dimensions I really believe that God wants to bring it in a superior dimension in this house but the question is can God trust you there are people who will stop going to church stop going to the house of God if they have a house a car and maybe some a few millions in the account do you know that there are certain levels of increase truly speaking that when you get to you will not have any personal prayer request again really so what will you do with your prayer time what will the five hours in his presence be spent for because now there seem to be legitimate reasons you can take every prayer request one one hour and before you know it is five hours your pain keeps you there but what if the pain is taken away may God never give me anything he cannot take back it's my miracle service prayer for myself may God never give me any influence any anointing any access you know how children behave that you give them something and say give me back and they refuse that's how many of us are it belongs to him and any day and any time he makes demand of it let it go in a heartbeat abraham take now thy son thy only son don't try to tell me he's the only one i know and i know you love him rise up the mountain the bible said abraham got up early in the morning carried isaac and was on his way to go today we say abraham's blessings are ours and jesus said if ye be the children of abraham then you will do the works of abraham sacrifice death it belongs to him that if god commits the anointing to you you will not go back home and begin to merchandise and then when you hear your pastor of your local assembly preaching you now say look at this man here the nonsense is preaching misguided revelation no power what am i doing in this church open to the book of first ah! kings chapter 4 that's where he's going and you become like the man with the one talent 
and then you find out the last meeting you went to is the last do you think you are anointed doors suddenly close not all closed doors are demonic god closes doors he can shut it and no man can open including a man of god he shuts it to keep you it is his way of bringing preservation so that you will not be lost hallelujah increase can bring pride money can bring pride anointing can bring pride you see i've had the privilege of hosting god's anointing to a measure and i know what the anointing can do the anointing can turn you to become like a god human beings can worship you if necessary it is up to you to not be foolish and rent your garment if need be and say look i know i'm divine but don't forget i'm human my dominion is shared dominion not absolute dominion there are many of us who will not look for honor but when you get it and it's rising beyond the level you know should be you will stop it it's still sin i know how far god has taken me and when i see human beings about to dehumanize themselves in the name of honoring the grace of god upon my life i must behave myself wisely to say no no you have honored me enough i get the message don't go beyond this and god says i can trust you with more I was at Benny Hinn's meeting last week and while I sat down and I was just watching the man of God minister the grace the power the presence I said what level of trust did this man show God that granted him this level of grace with a single word brothers and sisters miracles were happening as though it was a charm rising from wheelchairs as if people as if they said everybody stand up Casually, and it was not an issue to him. All the honor and the glamour there, it didn't concern him at all. When he got up and took the mic, he was, you could see his heart crying in the presence of God. I said, that's it. That's a man who has met presidents. He does not meet a president. A president meets him and calls it a privilege. And yet he can kneel down before God and roll like a child. Please, let's learn a lesson tonight. There is something about our understanding that is making our prayers look like it is not answered. Especially for those of us here who have come to receive the impartation. You will get it. This is not a thing of age. This is not a thing of level. It's a thing of alignment through knowledge. Hallelujah. I have watched people with little honor and I have seen the way they have misused the grace of God given to them. And this is the message God put in my heart to share with us. Shortly we are going to rise and we are going to be celebrating the hand of God here. Some of you who are coming here for the first time, I'm sure you have followed online, you have followed the teachings. Or you have heard testimonies of what God is doing with the man of God. This is the man of God. This is all of me. So take now that you have seen me, take your eyes away and trust the God of heaven to surprise you. This is all. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Revelation. Let my king be Not Joshua Selman. Not Koinonia. Not miracles. Not anointing. 
my life, not power, not money, not anointing, not miracles, not influence. Let me tell you, if you can pass this test tonight, then there is no limit to what God can do in your heart. Lift your voice and pray passionately to God. Go ahead. Lord, I can be trustworthy. Go ahead and pray. Walk on my heart. Walk on my tendencies. Walk on my heart. Walk on pride. If all I say, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Pray from the depth of your heart. If all I say. Let it be your prayer. The miracle is already happening to you. Sing you have captured my heart. Come my heart with your love. It's the secret of the mighty hand of God upon a man. You have captured And I, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, not if Joshua Selman, not if koinonia thank god for the honor but if i be lifted up then i will draw beyond revelation beyond gimmicks i will draw all men to myself I'd like you to pray and cry to God. Father, mercy upon my tendencies. My tendencies with money. My tendencies with pride. I cry. This is the miracle service happening to us already. Lift your voice and pray. Lift the issue of house and sickness. Pray. 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 <laughs> Forget about your business. Forget about ministry. Forget about all of these things. Just focus on yourself. Lord, make me trustworthy. Make me trustworthy. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? The next prayer point. Lord, 
every idol in my heart listen allow me say it first before you pray do you know what an idol is is something you cannot live without something that assumes the place of god a job can be an idol a wife can be an idol a husband can be an idol a boyfriend a girlfriend an uncle can be an idol the government can be an idol revelation can be an idol bible study can be an idol even prayer can be an idol when your attention leaves jesus to prayer idolatry is happening there subtly you are more concerned about the motions than the contact with a real person it's idolatry are we together god wants to bless us i came to pour my heart because i really want god to help us father there are things in my life that it looks like i cannot do without them destroy that tendency in me whoever told you until your account is fat you cannot sleep well who lied to you who made money such an idol there are some of us whether or not you need money once there is nothing in your account you can't sleep Abba. some of us will not be able to sleep because of marriage when will the man come when will the woman come is idolatry i know you need a miracle in that regard god will give it but it's still idolatry lord when will the ministry come when will i start having ushers and peers around and god says i watch your heart idolatry lord when will the anointing on apostle come upon my life so that i will also make a name so that this will happen and god says no way you must be emptied of yourself for the life that i now live i live by the faith of the son of god sing lord i will bow i will bow to you to no other god but you lord lord i will worship you nothing hands have made nothing hands have made but you lord i will lay down my idols come on sing with me and i will lay down my idols and thrones i have made and all that has taken my heart so lord i will bow I will bow to you, to no other God but you, Lord. Blessed is the man that God can find trustworthy. Blessed is the woman. I'm telling you, you have not seen what God can do in your life till He finds you worthy of trust. You have not seen the kind of husband God can give until He finds you trustworthy. You have not seen the kind of wife God can give until He finds you trustworthy. You have not seen money. You have not seen nothing. I'm not talking business. You have not seen suffering wealth until God can trust your heart. You've not seen influence and anointing. You've not seen revelations yet until he can trust your heart. We are praying. Don't mind the time. God wants to deal with our life specifically. Please pray. Leave the miracles. They will happen in a moment. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Use all of me, 
all of me, Lord. Take all of me. All of me, use all of me, keep all of me. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Take my everything. I release my everything. You have everything. Say, take all of me, all of me. All of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, take all of me, take all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, take all of me, all of me, use all of me, Lord, you have my everything. One more prayer. And then I'll begin to minister. One last prayer from the depth of your heart. Lord, dethrone everything that is above you in my life. No matter what it is. I dare you to pray that prayer. Dethrone it. Whatever has found its way to rise above you. Dethrone it in my life. The quest for success. The appetite for influence. The pride of life, vain glory in accomplishments, dethrone it. That you be the Lord seated above and alone in a place guarded in my life by your jealousy. Take all of me, use all of me. Take all of me. Shalakata prakata sedega de balada balada bo. Shaka kapara kato sada brande gala kavya kato siada bala. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that we have done the first things first, you can now pray. And say, Father, now that I've given you my heart, let everything that mocks you in my life bow to your name tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Everything. If it's sickness, let it go. Please pray. Lord, I have come tonight. Every oppression of darkness, let it give way right now. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I'll be ministering will be very fast. Very fast. It is very easy for the Holy Spirit to bring healing miracles deliverances to a life that is surrendered the problem is usually our hardness our hardness of heart makes it difficult difficult for god to find expression there are people gathered here under all kinds of strange influences carrying all kinds of devils one word i tell you is enough to set you free provided your heart is open it's not in the motions it's authority authority keep your hands lifted please just keep your hands lifted I'm just acting as the Lord is leading me the anointing of the Spirit is upon my life now now the Lord is asking me to count five at the fifth count please bring all the people under the anointing at the fifth count at the fifth count 
Jesus, I give you praise. One. Two. My goodness. Three. Four. Get ready now. Five. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, inside and outside. There is a reason why I ask you to bring them out. The Lord is bringing strange miracles to people right now. Overflow one outside. I see mighty angelic activities there. Mambre eteka deko salabar subrega de galabala rabosh shakatos kabarandas kadabrakatosia. The authority of the king is in this place. Kalabarosa kabarakatos shakres elekete bros kadabarakata barusia dabala daba. Asha barakatos sabria dabala dabala daba. There is an anointing that is coming on these people. This set of people, this is not deliverance. This is a, there is an anointing, there is a kind of wine, there is a kind of oil that I'm seeing that is coming on this specific group of people. It's a strange level of grace and wine. You reign, you ancient Zion king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient iron skin, Kadosh, Kadosh, my tree on your throne. Break forth down fountains of the deep and weep, Kadosh, you are my tree on your throne. Please lift your hands. I'm seeing written in the air revelation the spirit of revelation I don't know why God is starting this way but I'm stretching my hands there are people that are receiving a baptism of the spirit of revelation access to the mysteries of the kingdom at the count of three let it be yours one two three take it is yours the spirit of revelation granted access to the deep things of the spirit access access Receive it. The gate is open. The gate is open in the spirit. Access, access, access to the depths of the spirit. I give you eyes that see and ears that hear. Access to the deep things of the spirit. My G on your throne. My G on your throne. My G on your throne. He is my G in this place. My cheek in this place, my cheek in this place. Shekinah Garaba Kotuzia. Hallelujah. Now listen. The Lord is bringing deliverance to families. And hear me, this is the sign. I'm seeing people burning physical fire on them. It's like altars on fire, but physical individuals are becoming representatives of it in the name of jesus i stretch my hands right now that fire that brings deliverance at the count of three in the name of jesus i release it all over this place one two three let that fire fall right now let that fire fall right now i challenge thrones dominions the works of darkness Hallelujah. I want to pray. There are spirits that are behind the undoing of many families. There are spirits that are behind many infirmities. There are spirits that are behind many predictable patterns. Are you ready for for? total freedom not partial freedom that you come back tomorrow lift your hands now you are ready to shout jesus something is happening in this place listen at the count of three i want you to shout at the top of your voice and in the name of jesus as you shout at the top of your voice 
this family is under strange attack this family in the name of jesus christ by the anointing of the holy spirit i decree and declare the foundation of evil in this family comes under judgment right now in the name of jesus bring her out are you ready to shout it's not a careless shout shout it with your might and your heart and you watch what happens to the gates of hell lord i pray that the force is tying down families tying down destinies tying down breakthroughs in this year of signs and wonders i pray that you arise oh god of jeshurun in the shout of your people let there be total deliverance are you ready at the count of three one two three let there be deliverance right now i cause devils i cause spirits i cause enchantments divination operations of witchcraft all the overflows those following online i place a sanction on the works of darkness please lift your hands and pray you are here in this place and all you have seen in your life is closed doors closed doors closed doors i'm about to speak to you by the spirit closed doors the anointing for open doors is about to be released on certain people now lord where are they in the name that is above all names anyone here under the influence of any closed door i stretch my hands now take that grace take that grace for open doors take that grace take that grace take that grace please help them take that grace i open the doors doors of breakthrough doors of breakthrough doors of breakthrough hallelujah the lord wants to end please listen we are flowing very fast for the sake of time listen for when your word comes there are families that are tied with patterns the same thing happens to everybody regardless of what geographic region they are almost graduating they catch you from malpractice then something else happens to someone then something else happened. Someone wants to get married. After introduction, there is problem. Another person has the same thing. They are called patterns. They are programmed by a covenant. But tonight, in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare, get set because fire is about to fall to break all kinds of patterns. Are you ready now? At the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above all names. And at the shout of that name, every pattern in every family, both for you and your loved ones connecting by faith that there be liberty are you ready one two three i break patterns be broken now patterns be broken now ordinances that cause repetition be broken now open up the gates shake it shake it shake it shake it Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Will you open up, say, open up the gate? We're making a decree in the realm of the spirit. Open up the door Will you open up the cage? Open up the cage The cage Open up the door Hallelujah Goodness Bring that lady This lady you are holding Come Hold on, don't worry, just keep her, I'll come down. 
as I stood there, I saw a very strange kind of oppression in this lady's family. And if we leave her to sit down there, you will think she's free. But it's not over. In the name of Jesus, I curse the devil that is back of this tragedy. It's time for you to go. This is Koinonia, a place of God's presence and power. And I dislodge every force of darkness. Be gone now. In the name of Jesus Christ, forever, 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 in the name of Jesus. Overflow 3. I just want you to watch your screen. Just overflow 3. I want to pray for you. The Lord is ministering something to me. The overflow in the building there. Overflow 3. At the count of 3, I want you to shout the name Jesus. I see massive angelic activities happening there. Overflow 3. Are you ready now? At the count of 3. 1, 2, 3. Let there be miracles right now. Let there be breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Stella. Stella. I'm hearing a name. Stella. 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 Jalako siara kato sabri anato siara. Rando skalabo skalabaro kushia. Kalabaro siara Hold on. I want you to bring the lady that begins to laugh strangely by the spirit now. Here in this congregation now. Open up the gates. Open up the doors. Bring her. I want to prophesy. Because the Lord is saying that He's bringing your family into a season of strange laughter. This is the word of the Lord to this lady. I don't know what has happened in her family. This same grace is falling on certain people right now as I'm speaking. This same grace, the Lord is opening doors of laughter to their families. And many people will find out by the Spirit, in an uncontrollable way, that grace, the laughter is not just some sarcasm. It is by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I release that grace. I release that grace. I release that grace. I release that grace. What's your name? Stella, where are you from? I want to pray for you. I'm going to pray for everyone, but I want to pray. Please hold her back for her. I want to pray for you. There is witchcraft in your family, and I must pray seriously for you. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not a prophet of doom. This is a place where God is setting people free. That brother holding photos, you, the young man, look at him. Come. Hold my hands, my dear. In the name of Jesus, I end the plague of witchcraft right now in your family. I command by the Spirit of the Lord that everything that does not look like God in your family be uprooted now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to lay hands on you. God is anointing you. I'm seeing an anointing like oil that is coming upon you. And the Lord is saying this anointing is bringing favor not just to you but your family. This is what the Lord is saying. He's bringing you to that realm, that dimension of favor. That dimension of favor. That dimension of favor. The Lord is bringing rest to your family. That's the word that I'm hearing. Rest. Rest to your family. Rest to your family. There is a gentleman, as I'm laying hands on this lady, I'm seeing light leaving her and is looking for a gentleman somewhere. There is a gentleman that this same word is for. The anointing of the Spirit is coming upon him right now. He's inside this auditorium. Let me have that gentleman now. The anointing of the Spirit of God is going to come upon a brother. As I'm laying hands on this lady, it's by the Spirit.
rest for you in the name of Jesus rest and I cause the powers of darkness I'm seeing witchcraft in your family let me make contact with him bring him into a point of rest oh God take away hardship from the family in the name of Jesus Christ let hardship be gone forever in the name of Jesus Christ your family is going to experience breakthrough in the month of March the month of March is a breakthrough month for your family in the name of the Lord Jesus the Lord is bringing breakthrough for your family by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus I don't know who this woman is madam can I talk to you please come quickly Is this your first time here? You've been here. I want to pray for you. I take away the spirit of death. Death. Hold my hands. Let it lead you in the name of Jesus. The spirit of death. I curse it by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus. The spirit of death. No one will bury you. You will not bury anyone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm seeing... Okay, this is the gentleman. Let me see the photos. Who is this? Where is your mom's photo? This is what I'm looking for. Where is she? Where is she? She's in the house. Where is the house? Oh, Anambra State. Anambra State. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. So that you will not hear that your mother is survived by you people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, I'm want to pray that's why i asked you to come with the people this is this is your mother's mother this is your grandmother this is what the spirit of god is tell me yes or no yes sir i'm saying this is your grandmother yes sir and the lord is showing me this photo and he's saying this was your mom yes sir when she was young yes sir is that true yes sir the lord is bringing is taking away death are you hearing what i'm saying yes sir because i'm seeing that the devil wants to attack the life of your mother but the reason why I held this photo is so that I will cancel death completely. Yes, Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Forget about your personal desires. God is going to meet that. Okay. What good is your desire if you hear that your mom has just gone like that? Hold these photos. Father, preserve the life of our mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against death. I lay my hands on this photo and I decree and declare that your mother lives strong and active. In the name of Jesus Christ strong and active in the name of Jesus strong and active in the name of Jesus I'm seeing an employment letter in the sky this is what I'm seeing yes this is a letter of employment I'm seeing and I'm seeing it fall on I'm seeing a number written nine on it this is nine people nine people that this is happening to right now by the spirit I declare wherever they are nine people inside and outside let the anointing of the spirit touch those people now supernatural employment you cannot explain it it's by the spirit i release the grace to make this happen they are scattered across nine people i'm going to pray generally for jobs but i'm just doing what the lord is showing me in the name of jesus receive it receive it wherever you are receive it regardless of the limitations i decree and i declare it becomes yours right now it becomes yours by the power of the spirit in the name of jesus christ Stella. my sister's name Stella. Is Stella. your sister's name okay yes. come let me pray for you and you know whatever it is that she's trusting god for and i use you also as a point of contact in the name of jesus let there be a miracle for you the lord is taking away shame from her life this is what he's doing he's rolling away shame from her life in the name of jesus christ rolling away shame the lord is bringing speed you know you always hear me prophesy speed but many people just fall for nothing and stand up and they don't believe it speed is real where in such a short time you can do so much i want to pray that grace and i know it's going to come on specific people right now and then we're going to pray for the sick And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. Grace. There is a grace for speed. There is a grace for speed. I'm going to pray. Be careful so that those who start running by the Spirit don't, don't interrupt anyone. Please, be careful. 
it doesn't mean you have to do that but i've seen that happening to people in a vision that grace is coming and you see them it's like they can't control themselves wherever they are oh god i stretch my hands now the grace for speed take that grace now grace for speed run like elijah in the name of jesus i command speed in your life i program speed in your destiny inside and outside everywhere in the name of jesus let that grace come upon you let it come upon your career let it come upon your walk of faith speed 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 for your family speed for your career Is the way God restores he restores by bringing speed the same way what you would have done you could not do then he makes you do certain things that you are not supposed to do God is not done that grace is still coming on people this grace for speed I want to pray for the sick but I'm seeing that grace come on people that in one month the hand of God will so be stretched on your life and you will do things that will amaze you i stretch my hands may the right hand of god bring speed speed to people in the name of jesus speed to projects speed to family concerns speed to dreams and visions and goals in the name of jesus christ hallelujah we're going to pray for the sick will be very fast but just allow me do something strange that i'm seeing in the spirit i'm seeing the angels of the lord capture like an entity like a dark entity and put it on chains and is bringing it out and the lord is saying that this is what has been stopping the breakthrough of many families please listen listen for no man can come into a man's house and spoil that man except he binds the strong man this is what the lord is showing me in the vision and i'm about to pray this to happen now many of you will be surprised it may not concern you but you are standing for your family how many of you know we believe in family here you are not free if your family is not free let me tell you the truth so there's no room for selfishness to say i'm okay if your family is in captivity to sabotage your own success you will have untold battles from your very loved ones if all the brothers of joseph equally had dreams they won't fight themselves but because only one person had a dream the rest fought him the spirit of the living god i'm seeing this entity i'm seeing it again it's, it's recurring like a vision and the lord is asking me to prophesy and as i speak that word i'm seeing like arrows this is not for destruction this is bringing strange breakthrough to families in the name of jesus christ lord i don't know who belongs to this category but inside outside online wherever you are in the name of jesus at the count of three your family is ready to be free right now and god will give you a sign right now one two three i command that freedom i command that liberty now i command that liberty now i command that liberty now from every cause every yoke every spell every enchantment be free now from the north of nigeria to the south the east and the west every locality represented in the name of jesus be free i challenge every power every force i challenge every force every strong man 
that stands at the gate of every family to make sure there is no going out and there is no coming in. He has tied the destiny of women, the destiny of men, the destiny of women. Release them now. Release them now. Release their destinies now. In the name of Jesus, I command every strong man by covenant who has tied any family. Let them go now. Many things are happening under this cloud. God is bringing vengeance. Vengeance upon the wicked. Hallelujah. Why is their breakthrough hanging? This is what I'm seeing like a hunger, keeping something like a garment, and then I'm seeing people naked and not clothed by that garment. It's a revelation. It should be yours, but something has kept it in the spirit. Right now, fire. I see fire coming on the hands of people. This is a reception in the realm of the spirit. I stretch my hands. Right now, in the name of Jesus, let that anointing release what is yours. Whatever has left heaven and is yet to enter your hand. Let it come into your hands now. By the spirit of the living God. Let it come into your hands now. By the spirit of the living God. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Take it now. In the name of Jesus. Open up the gate. Listen, I'm going to pray for the sick now, but I'm led to release a word of prophecy. Any family in trouble now, the Bible says, if you are not in trouble, don't worry. There are families in trouble that only God can set them free. He says, I'm by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet were they preserved. I want to send a word that will bail families out now. In the name that is above all names, I prophesy to any family in trouble, whether financial trouble, whether witchcraft, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, come out of that trouble now. Come out of that challenge now. I send prophecy like a sword into your family. Come out of every predicament now. Come out of shame now. Come out of disappointment now. And every spirit that is joining the head of family members together, quarrel, brothers hating themselves, sisters hating themselves either because of money or property or whatever it is i silence that devil right now in the name of jesus please be sensitive please be sensitive don't be careless at all be very spiritual the lord is showing me a plane that is taking someone outside this country i'm seeing a plane by the spirit this is what i'm seeing a plane rising and moving rising above buildings rising above fences i don't know if there are people here trusting god for that miracle but i release it now by the spirit of the living god i release it now i release it now i release it now I release it now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now listen, listen very carefully. We want to pray for the sick. Now listen. I'll tell you why many people don't receive. They don't expect to receive. They expect to be prayed for, but they don't expect to receive. The standard procedure is to just pray for people at random and then 
those who are healed come out and we take testimonies but because we understand the kind of grace that god has put upon this ministry and we want to take out time to make sure people are touched at least i know that there are thousands of people but it's not too much to be ministered to we don't want anyone to go back it's a privilege that god has given us in this territory to carry his healing power and that's why we take out time to minister to people who are going to be very very fast i know that there are many of you who came here sick it's a miracle service it's not joke the testimonies you've been hearing are not stage managed god is about to do it again so i want you to be sensitive so we are going to do it very fast whilst that is happening please how many of you have written your prayer requests now i want to give you a chance for those who have not written your prayer request you will be praying and then you'll be writing it down write your request call your loved ones and tell them god is at work god answers prayers in this place very quickly but those who are trusting god for healing miracles please overflow one two three main auditorium make your way now quickly make your way quickly to the front please quickly let's save time father in the name of jesus let this corporate grace work let there be miracles there are people with real conditions some terminal diseases you are the healer we are only channels for you to reach people and lord we step in your authority let there be miracle signs and wonders right now in the name of jesus god bless you guys we'll be very very fast the worship team will coordinate us please make sure that you are trusting god for miracles write your requests and then afterwards we're going to pray on the request in the name of jesus christ you're the god of wonders amazing god you're the god of miracles amazing god you're the god of wonders amazing god you're the god of miracles amazing you are the god Amazing God, Amazing God. You're, the God of You're the God of miracles. Amazing God, Amazing You are the God, God, God of wonders. You are the God of wonders. Amazing God, Amazing You are the God of miracles.
You're the God of what someone does. I face it up your power. You have shown me so much mercy, much more than I deserve. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard the wonders of your grace. Creation bow in all of you as we join to hear you pray. The words that speak the things around.
nothing you cannot turn around. ministering in your your place don't worry you can be following the prayers while you stand those still ministering just just go ahead it's time to pray please if you are yet to submit your request just wave it and someone will pick it please quickly quickly if you are yet to submit your requests why do we do this it's not a ritual brothers and sisters this is a mystery that god has given unto us you have heard of the strange testimonies these are some of the mysteries that happen in every miracle service where everybody's request can find expression here this is a representation of the pain the cry the impossible situation of men and women and i'm kneeling before the lord on behalf of his people to arise and do great things we have seen all kinds of testimonies you heard the testimonies this morning don't sit back there and be wondering will God do it no no you see the grace that answers to these prayers you see is a covenant are we together every man has a covenant with God not grace law no a mystery between you and God like a husband and his wife and God can bless you for the sake of another it's true. it's true it's true Paul said for this cause I Paul bow my knees to the father of our Lord I want to pray a prayer and he's praying so this is not just some careless fetish thing no no not at all not at all we are people of spiritual intelligence I'm saying this because I want you to release your faith and believe. Nobody reads anybody's request here. It is between you and God. As soon as we are done here, these requests are gone and they are born. So next time you are writing requests, don't say if I write this, what if they read? Look at it. There are thousands of requests here. Who has time to read whatever is written? There is a God that answers prayers. There is a God that can wipe tears in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands towards me and I want you to just pray in the Spirit.
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and I declare that over this request my God and my Lord this is a representation of the pain of your people this is a representation of their struggles this is the representation of their difficulties. This is the representation of the mountains that stand between them and their joy and their rest and their peace. Families are almost breaking because of the requests that are tabled here. Many people are losing their minds and losing their destinies and almost losing the faith. Lord, I pray that you arise like the mighty God that you are visit everyone individually in the name of jesus visit every case individually in the name of jesus visit every individual in the name of jesus visit every family in the name of jesus i decree and declare that every request brought before this altar may my god arise in majesty and turn it to a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ Lord in this year of signs and wonders begin to give your people tokens and signs let them know you have answered their prayers in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus the request you have written here no matter how impossible let this be the last time you will write it let this be the last time you will write it let this be the last time you will write it every human agent who can partner with god to make this request your testimony i call them into your life now whoever must die for this prayer to be answered in the name of jesus that they do not repent may the fire of god bring judgment on them whoever must lose sleep like nebuchadnezzar for this prayer to be answered let it be so for them whoever must have a revelation like abimelech to let you be May God give them that visitation. Whoever must exalt you like Joseph, in the name of Jesus, may God bring them to answer this. Whoever must favor you like Hadassah, Esther, may God compel them to do so for you. Lord, for many of these requests let it be by this time tomorrow let it be by this time tomorrow that your people will be rejoicing in glory in the name of jesus christ the same way i stand upon this request it will never rise above any one of you i stand upon it prophetically and i declare that it remains under your feet forever There are situations here that require creative miracles. May the God of heaven make it happen. There are issues here that require restoration. May the King of glory make it happen. There are requests here that represent divine connections. In the name of Jesus, may God make it happen. Whoever fights the answer to this request is fighting God and God will arise in his vengeance and judgment In the name of Jesus Christ Therefore we agree with the saints in heaven and the angels and we call this request done 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 In the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah listen these are the things we engage that bring the results you see 
if the devil tries to escape the prophetic word to you the request is there waiting for him it does it is impossible to come for the miracle service and not expect a miracle the system has been so designed that you must be visited if not by prophecy if not through the worship if not through the prayer if not by direct contact by this covenant practice here it's impossible for you to not experience signs and wonders now i want to pray for you this is the last thing we're going to do here a gentleman once asked me and said why do you say that the prophetic declarations over god's people is the most powerful part of the miracle service because to him it doesn't look like it there are people flying up and down under the anointing and that looks to him more charismatic and the revelations of the word of knowledge and prophecy and i told him i said you see all those things are revelatory they just reveal informations that most likely the person knows but this that is being uttered is creating realities it's not a suggestion son of man can these bones leave he said only down the west then he said prophesy he said i prophesied as i was commanded and there was a sound he didn't say somebody look for where the bones that means that you did not see the different bones did not mean they were not there they were just waiting for the word that will bring them together the same way you are here your blessing is in one state your breakthrough is in another place prophecy calls them like the bones the bones did not beg they just listened because everything has an ear so i want your heart to be open please believe it with all your heart believe this word in the name of jesus let me pray for you now In the name that is above all names i pray for you right from january that the kind of speed you have never seen in your life may that dimension of speed become your testimony from tonight in the name of jesus christ And they told Saul, he said, on your way going, you will see three men holding two loaves of bread. He said, they will all salute you and two of them will give you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. You know, one of my greatest desire, if you ask me, one of the greatest graces that I desire to come on people in this season is favor. many people think they know what favor is no believe me if you really have favor it will end suffering in your life regardless of the condition there is such a grace that can follow a man like a shadow people are rising as if they charm them to make sure you succeed in the name that is above all names from tonight Walk experientially in the favor of God. Walk experientially in the favor of God. Walk experientially in the favor of God. Listen, what your strength could not do for you, what your education could not do, what your experience could not do, I compel favor to do it for you. God is taking away every reproach and I prophesy it every embargo every reproach on anyone's life and destiny I roll it away now shake it, shake it, shake it. I roll it away now I roll it away now hear me I don't know who has ignored you or the grace of God upon your life but I put an anointing upon you for recognition and honor. 
I prophesy to your life a grace for recognition and honor. Receive it right now. I don't know what has died in your hand. It works for others until it gets to your turn. Right now in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I command that nothing dies in your hands. Nothing fails in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your spiritual life. Many of you, it's been a long time since you had a real encounter. Encounters with angels, encounters of visions. I release that unction for a strange dimension of deep encounters. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Open visions, dreams. Receive it, encounters from scripture. Let it be yours in the name of Jesus. I pray for people whose prayer lives have gone down, cold, lukewarm. You are not bad. You just found out that your prayer life is like everything just disappeared. You open your Bible, you just keep looking at it. You can't study. In the name of Jesus, I find the coals upon that prayer altar. It comes back to life now. It comes back to life now. The spirit that causes men to sleep and slumber, they open their Bibles and sleep on it for hours. Mumble tongues for five minutes. I command that spirit to live your life forever. Let there be fire on your prayer altar. Let there be fire upon your prayer life. I pray for those whose passion for the word has disappeared. No studying books, no watching videos, no spiritual development. I declare, may that passion be restored tonight. Every wrong individual in your life that is not adding to your life, I take them out of your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone here looking for a job in the name of Jesus, you will not get a job that will make you ashamed to say I'm working. You will get a job with honor and dignity. I pray for those who are students. The kind of CGPA you have never seen in the name that is above all names, let that become your testimony. For those of you who have written exams and accept God helps you, the truth is what you wrote is nonsense. Let the mercy of God bring corrections for you. Hallelujah. I still am led to pray for students. There are those here right now who don't even know where their school fees will come from. Truthfully speaking, no accommodation, no school fees no father no mother and some of them out of pressure are already being tempted of the devil to start getting into ways that will destroy them may the mystery that brought ravens for elijah bring your resources in the name of jesus christ two more prayer points and we're done I pray for your family members. I don't know what has made you watch your parents cry. As adult as they are, a situation broke them down till they cry. I declare that an end comes to that shame. An end comes to that embarrassment. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. That by February miracle service, may you be ten times greater than you are now ten times greater than you are now in the name of jesus christ listen i want you this month is almost ending please i want you to pay attention to every teaching we have some dangerous series we're about to start please 
I want you to open up your spirit and listen. These teachings are free for our own edification. If I were you, I would look forward to when this message will be uploaded and I will play it. Even if you are not concentrating, just let it run. Especially the prayer times and you receive it into your spirit. You have to engage the word. God is not a magician. Are we together? I bless you in the name of Jesus. You will not need to tell people you came here. God will arise and surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Now, aside from those under the anointing, please listen carefully. I'm about to make the altar call. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.